following podcast is brought to you exclusively by the Rad Rob Radio Network. This is PBA champion Kyle Troop. Hey all, Jacob Ledger here. Jeff Riggles here from 11thframe.com. Hey guys, Chuck Ritchie here, formerly of Bull TV. Hey guys, this is Ryan Schaefer of track staff at Valley Bowling Center in Waverly, New York. And you're listening to Straight Up 5 with Johnny Petraglia Jr. Yo, the boys from Straight Up 5, Rad Rob, Dr. Ocho, and of course, JP Jr. Pick it out. Fear the fro, baby. Welcome to Straight Up 5 with Johnny Petraglia Jr. A hard-hitting, in-depth, cutting-edge look into the world of bowling. This podcast will not only cover all things bowling, but will also give you a raw look into real-life issues. You'll get unfettered access into the mind of one of the most gifted bowlers of this or any other generation. Strike, and they claim it. Certainly does it! So without further ado... Let's introduce you to the hosts of the show. Rad Rob, Rob Francois. Rad Rob, Rob Francois. Dr. Ocho. Dr. Ocho. And the incomparable Johnny Petraglia Jr. Johnny Petraglia Jr. Hey guys, welcome to Straight Up 5 with Johnny Petraglia Jr. I'm your host, Rad Rob, Rob Francois. This is episode 111, and I, 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 I'm I tickled pink. I, I, you know, we've had lots of great guests on this show, and this is going to be one one of them. I, I, I'm so excited to speak. I chat with him for a minute before we got online, uh, but I'm super, super excited for this show. Uh, Nico is in the house. Amanda Moore, what's going on? Crambone, Mike Ruther, hello. Have I gotten Popeyes lately? No. No, sadly, I'm uh, trying to cut back. Jeff Skyers in the house. What's going on, everybody? All right. I'm bringing in my first co-host. He is the man with the... Oh, he doesn't have a golden mask. Uh, typically, he's the man with the golden mask. Uh, he still is the resident doctor of Straight Up 5. Uh, I'm a little confused by what I'm seeing in my, in my window here. Dr. Ocho, you, you got a new mask, bro. No. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen that mask since, well, you know, the, the group formerly known as the Grapplers. Uh, They're not formally known. They're the Amer- still known. The Americanos or whatever. They never they die. They never die. And no, I'm a well, good guy. Actually, you're right. They never, they never do. Good guys wear white. I'm the good guy now. That's why Amanda DM'd me and said, um, you know, why don't you just tone it down a little bit? You're such a hot guy. Just tone it down a little bit and maybe, you know, and I was like, you're right, Amanda. That was nice of you. And I pre- appreciate that. She gave me life advice. I like your name tag there. <laughs> oh, that is so good. That is so good. We- <laughs> we'll get into that. Uh, that. That's that's good stuff. All right. Let's let's bring in the man, the name of the marquee. He is the star of the show. He is the sexiest man in the world. Looks like he just got a nice clean shave from Georgie. Let's bring in Johnny Petraglia Jr. What's going on, JP? Another day in paradise. I did not get a, a fresh, uh, fresh dew from Georgie. I, I'm due for one, as you guys yeah. say. But well, I mean, you're, you're 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 manscaped. Good job, buddy. Oh, I, I trimmed the neck. You know, I left a little bit of the five o'clock shadow since it's been nonstop rain and hell here in good old New Jersey for the last four <laughs> days. Yeah, here too. Uh, looking forward to uh, the spring months and uh fuck punks it's holy phil because it was definitely wrong yeah i know no doubt about that big time uh, wrong i must have dropped him again i must have missed the name tag uh memo because uh you guys uh, happy birthday nicole happy birthday nicole oh. we have a secret chat we have a secret chat rob without you it's out it's everybody that's been a guest and um, i gotta i gotta be honest if you. there was one person i didn't expect to not be rocking the prices right name tag today it's you Rob. Yeah, I I was bogged down with invoices, you know, uh, for invoices hard for end of month, and I just couldn't get it done. But, Frank, uh, oh, I love invoices, it. invoices. You get an invoice. You get an invoice. You get an invoice. You get an invoice. 
How about uh, without further ado, why don't you uh, play our little highlight package for yes. our guest tonight? I do have a highlight package of our very special guest. Here are the highlights from D. Ron Booker. <laughs> Deron Booker, Omte Anweyamde. Deron, uh, 550. 550, Jessica. 899. 8.99. And the actual retail price is 8.34. With Deron at two bucks. Yeah, I'm glad that you don't let your guts fall off. People won't know who we are. Uh, you, you're going to be so excited today. Get ready, Rich. D-Ron, how about a new pass? Start with the first one right here. Let's see. Oh, my gosh. That hurts. You're right, had the worst luck in uh, gas money. You want to say hi to anybody? Yeah, I'd like to say hi to my dad and my crew over there. Crew Sporting Crew! Just pulled the 300 game in real life. Watch out! Watch out! Watch out! Watch out! Stop, stop, stop! d has got a dollar! d has got a dollar! Perfect score for d -Rod. Way to go! This showcase can be yours if the price is right. All right, D-Ron. One dollar. One dollar. All right, welcome back to The Price is Right, D-Ron. We're going to start with you, a washer and dryer that you couldn't really see, refrigerator you couldn't really see, dishwasher you couldn't really see, and a Ford Flex that was backwards. It did a dollar. Actual retail price, $33,338. You're only off. Like thirty-three thousand three hundred thirty-seven dollars. The reason you bid a dollar, Deborah, is because he thinks you're over. Uh, you had a trip to the Mediterranean uh, and you went crazy, and you bid forty-six bedroom and mattress, a range, all right, and then Mediterranean, you just went nuts. I did. You bid forty-six thousand. Actual retail price. Hang on to your seat, folks. Is it's only twenty-one thousand four twenty-nine. I'm sorry, Deborah. Hey, Ron, you're the winner, buddy. Congratulations. Congratulations. T-Rod, $35,172 worth of prizes today. Here, let's see your friends, man. Want to have a special thank you to Kathy Kinney. Thanks, Kathy. Go to MrsP.com. You see Kathy Kinney reading stories to your kids. MrsP.com. Don't forget to spay new to your pets, folks. See you next time on Price is Right. Happy April Fool's. Bye-bye. Two pins away from his first tour title. Uh huh. What a performance. Incredible. Stayed clean. Nine spares and strikes only this entire game for Booker. For the mess. 
Masters. He's got it. History on Fox again. You can see the eyes right now. King Booker trying to keep it tight, but it is tough. Look at that smile. It is beautiful. Dombrowski, what a run here. Hope to see much more of him on the back half of the PBA Tour, but D-Ron Booker is the story. Had it all along. The price was right for D-Ron Booker. 40 pin win for D-Ron Booker in the title match. Let it out, man, let it out. We saw that smile yeah. before the match started. It kind of went away and his first ever title here in Vegas. More history on Fox, man. And you and I have, uh, we've done this for quite some time. And it <laughs> yep. just seems like we're always part of great history on the PBA Tour. I never tire of things like this. And this moment means I can continue to do this. I can continue to inspire. I can continue to coach. I can continue to drill balls. I can continue to do everything that I want to do for everyone else. That's just my big thing. I understand what it is that I need to do, but there are people out there that need the help, that want the help, that want that inspiration. And with that win today, that, that win is going to help inspire them. And so I'm telling everybody, like, let's go. Let, I will help you. I will help you get to where you want to be because you can see what I did is, is working out pretty well. All right, everybody, let's bring him in, the man of the hour. I got chills watching that win again. Good, man. Here is your 2024 USBC Masters champion. D. Ron Booker. Good evening, D. Ron. Thanks for being here, brother. Oh man, I, I watched that, and yeah, it, I, I don't think it'll ever get old. To be honest, to you guys. Uh, thank you first and foremost for having me on here. Um, this is great. You guys were the very first ones to reach out, and uh, I'm here. This is this is great. Ah, oh, I'm so excited. We're awesome. excited as well. Johnny, kick it off, brother. You know this man from uh, from years ago. Uh, go ahead, bud. It's all yours. I mean, obviously, I. Uh, You've gotten a million of these already, but congratulations from everybody here on your astounding, amazing, and absolutely epic win. It and I'm sure there's going to be many, many more to come. But uh, going back to uh, what Rob said, yeah, you know, D, I've had the pleasure of uh, once I moved out to Vegas, I've had the pleasure of spending a, a good amount of time with you uh, on and off the lanes, and uh, we've always had a, a very nice, a very good relationship. At least I think so. But. Um, Let's just let's just uh, jump right into it. Uh, walk us through. The, aside from your physical talent, where we're we're all fully aware now, the entire world is fully aware of your physical talent. The Masters is such a hard tournament to win because you have to win it so many times. And unlike last year, where Martel would have had to beat Simon twice in the title match, this year went back to the regular format where it was one game for the title, which means. Had you have lost, you would have been the only person in the tournament with one loss, which I've never been a fan of. However, I want to, I want to get, I, I want you to walk us through uh, mentally the, the the whole process from start to finish. When did it all start to feel real? Like this is happening right now. Just like kind of give us the the true take on what was going on. Oh um, yeah, um, I can definitely. Let me just start off with. Uh, you know, I was out bowling the PTQs last year, and uh, they didn't go very well. I, I didn't see them correctly. I didn't see the lanes correctly. Uh, my thought process was a little bit different than what it should have been. So it was a little bit of a struggle. And some tournaments uh, during that time, USBC tournaments in general, I always struggled at them. Um, I didn't look at the lane for what it was. I took a lot from what other people told me, and I didn't uh, let my my instincts and what I've worked so hard to achieve be my guide to success out there bowling. And so after I left from national tour, I wasn't upset. Uh, I went back to work and I talked to everyone there and I said, I'm not mad. I said, I learned 
five years worth of of knowledge out in out there bowling between bowling balls and 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 drilling and lane play and physical game that I did in the entire time being out in New Mexico in the shop in six years. And so I, I learned so much in such a little bit of time and I was able to take that back. And the very first tournament that I bowled outside of the national tour was nationals. And I was just like, okay, you know, me and nationals go way back and uh, we, we always had fighting words. And so this time I said, you know what, let me, pay attention. Let me let my skills do what it is that I need them to do to allow me to have some success. And being out there bowling against the ultimate best bowlers in the world, uh, it you have to be sharp, uh, both mentally and emotionally. And I'll talk about that a little bit more as well. And so uh, I got my emotions back in check. Uh, you know, it's just really tough going out there and, and saying, oh, I'm good enough and not seeing a penny next to your name. It does It does hit you a little bit emotionally, I will tell you that. Uh, but like you said, going moving on to nationals and seeing some success and having that be truly, I thought that was the longest waiting period of my life, uh, those 48 hours to make sure, hey, you got this win to uh, what happened uh, a couple of days ago. But, uh, you know, moving forward, my thought process going into the national tour this year was, OK, take what you learned. Uh, I talked to Steve Klemkin from Storm. He suggested a couple of layouts. Um, I was practicing, working on different things, uh, trying to roll the ball more, you know, just things that you would do to try to better your game going out on the national tour. And starting off the tour with the uh, PBA world, it was the uh, Players' Championship. Uh, my equipment never made it to until the morning before. <laughs> and so, you know, that's a great way to start the great way to start. But uh, I was able to, to get my equipment in to start and Bold well, missed by 11, and I was a little upset. And I said, man, like, don't let this happen again. Don't let this happen again. Uh, and so everyone kind of talked me down a little bit, and they said, you know, like I said, working on your emotions, dear on, get your emotions in check, get your emotions in check. And I was like, all right. And so I told myself I'm going to go bowl in Illinois, and I'm going to bowl the U.S. Open. And if I just seem to miss the cut in those, then I just I need to step away from it because I see what the going trend is. I see that I'm going to miss by a mark. And so uh, the Players' Championship, I missed by 11 pins. And then I went to the U.S. Open. I missed the PTQ for that by 20. And when I went to Illinois, I had said, all right, let's 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 do it. You know, you only you told yourself, give yourself these two tournaments. And I missed by two. And <laughs> so missing by two and not missing a makeable spare the entire time, um, I was like, I, I guess that's it. So I left, I regrouped, went back home, uh, you know, working with, uh, because I do work in a pro shop. Um, I went back home, did some coaching. And as I was coaching a lot of the people, I was learning some more things about myself in general, meaning, okay, I can tell you this, but how come I'm not taking my own advice when I'm out there bowling? And so just kind of, again, trying to get myself uh, both physically stable. Again, um, things with my game felt like they were off a little bit. Mentally, by telling myself, hey, you can get yourself out of this. You can keep on going. And emotionally, you know, I was wanting to love the game of bowling again. Uh, because at the time when you're out there and you're missing by a mark, you're not liking it right at that moment. You're, you're really upset. And going into the Masters, I said, all right, you have a new outlook. You have a new take. Let's have fun with it. And it just started working out from there. Um, I know, I don't know how far back you want me to go, but that's just kind of starting from the uh, national tour at that time. You're the guest, man. Take us anywhere you want. <laughs> it's all good. Um, what, was your, what was your mindset uh, going into the Masters, knowing what you just said previously? Yeah. Um, yeah. Were you pumped? Were you focused? I, I was definitely a, a lot more focused than I normally have been. Uh, more so, like I said, because me and the Masters or USVC events just kind of struggled. I missed cashing at the masters last year by 20 pins and i was uh 50 pins into the number uh going into the last gate and into the last day so that was something that was in the back of my mind but i did not let it tell me hey this is you know this could happen again because i was like i understood why it happened i understood that i wasn't listening to myself i wasn't looking at the ball reaction so i told myself don't make the same mistake twice so my mindset was Come out here, have a good time. You told yourself you're going to finish up the rest of the tour. So regardless, good, bad, and different, you're going to finish. So just just have fun. And uh, and I was. I was having a great time. Did you, um, throughout the course of the Masters, uh, this is always something that people are interested in is uh, bowling ball selection. Obviously, we saw you throw the attention star on TV with, 
uh, and bowled an extremely professional 217 game. Um, do, do you use a lot of bowling balls throughout the week? Were the uh, the pairs very different from one another, or, or were you able to actually stay kind of in the same zone with kind of the same motion, limited amount of bowling balls? Uh, I – I think I brought probably about 17 or 18 bowling balls to the masters uh, because it was within driving distance. And so you, you have to ask, you have to tell yourself um, if I think I need it, I have to bring it, especially for a tournament at that magnitude. Uh, sure. The very first day, you know, you have the A squad, the B squad, the C squad and a squad always likes to play them a little bit further to the right, try to break it down so you can get left and, and have a little bit of hold. So I played them really, really well. The first day, I think I got to 129 over uh, they're, you know, the first day. And I was like, oh, man. And that was a relief because, you know, previous years I would have to start off minus and kind of work my way in. So at this point, it was great to start off plus. And I started feeling a lot better about my ball choices. Um, during the start, I used, uh, let me see, I probably used about two or three different bowling balls to start. And as we got into a couple of days, after I would switch out a couple of balls to see if they would work. So I would tell you roughly I use about, you know, eight to 10, but I stuck with the attention star and exponent. Um, I think those were probably the two that, that worked out really well for me. Excellent. That's, that's Am I the only one that wanted him to grab the camera and go, the price is wrong, bitch, right after he won. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, I'm waiting for Sonny Gilmore. I'm, I'm, I'm like, oh, it's going to happen. He's going to nail this one. I know it. I know it. This is the pinnacle. But again, it's on TV. I get it. Let's yeah. edit that in for the for the YouTube video. Why don't we, we just, Rob, call the art department, Rob? Yeah, we just, send that we up. Go, yeah. I can't even see myself getting that close to a camera and saying, ah, you know. Yeah, I, right. I, well, <laughs> see, you're practicing already. I, I know. I, there's um, no way nobody else thought that, though. Yeah. No way. Exactly. And so I, you know, but the thing is, though, so you, you tell yourself, uh, when I get onto TV, how am I going to look? What am I going to say? What am I going to do? Am I even going to be able to speak? And that was my biggest thing. And talking with Kimberly Presley and some of the other people, uh, they were they were laughing because I was so focused on the image. And uh, I, I just like I don't want to make sure I want to make sure my forehead looks good. There's no grease on the forehead. I want to make sure that the hair looks good, like you know the beard's trimmed up. All these things that. Most people never want to say when it comes to TV, whereas you got to look at this. And obviously, I'm going to be looking at this for a long time. So it's there gonna... forever, man. You just it. <laughs> you know, somebody said to me that uh, one of the first things you said when asked about making the TV show was uh, you were kind of care. Uh, you want to make sure you had the right outfit picked out. Yes. And, and I think the same way. I'm like, man, I don't want my armpits sweating on national television. If I ever <laughs> you're, what, what you're, color not <laughs> you're not wrong. And so, you know, the ongoing joke that I had was uh, when I bowled Team USA trials, I led the first day and I had this, this particular jersey on. And then they took a picture of me wearing this particular jersey. And on Facebook, I had said, you guys, I do have more than one jersey. Like Everybody's just kind of <laughs> looking at it like, does this guy just walk around and and bowl in just the one jersey, um, which is which is so funny? But the one like I I see I do have more than one jersey, but it's like two of the same jersey. That's it. That's it. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I had to show you guys that because uh, I wanted to throw that in. I thought just that cut was the sleeves off of that one. You'll know they'll know the difference yeah, then, and then you just you just yeah. walk around. That's so. all. That's all you got to do. Plus, with your bowling arm, Jesus, that's oh, that, yeah. it's the gold medal right one. now. Hell yeah. yeah. This this one is just this one just flails in the wind. Like that's that's, 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 all, that's, that's no, it's for balance. <laughs> call that, this, we call this that balance. Balance. That's definitely for balance. We're talking mechanics here. That's still that's got yes. its purpose. It still it still has its purpose, you know. Here, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Probably. it would be hard to do it without it. So, so can, <laughs> can you explain since you hadn't been on TV before? Like, mm -hmm. obviously, you've watched probably hundreds of, of bowling shows over the years. Um, yes. Being there and seeing the production, seeing the setup, I'm sure it's hot as hell under those lights. What were your Ooh. first initial reaction when you're like, oh my God, I'm going to be bowling on this set that I've watched for who knows how long? For, forever. And uh, my reaction was just, was, was, wow. Uh, okay. Uh, I was always told by some of my friends who have made some of the shows that uh, it's going to go by really fast. And yeah. so I, in my mind, I just had everything planned out. 
Um, I knew that I had to talk to Kimberly about stuff. I knew that there was a, a portion of where I'm going to be standing and watching. I knew that there was going to be so much going on. And so I was more nervous about speaking on TV and starting and, and being kind of the headliner of it uh, more than anything. And once that was done, I had said, oh, OK, all right. Now, that's one less thing I have to remember because we went over it a couple of times because of you know, different, different avenues that are, that are going to be touched in, in bowling. We went over it and we were like, okay, what are we going to say? Let's go over it again. Let's just make sure you're going to be okay. And uh, working at the casino, I've done things in front of the camera. I've done promotional videos. I've done uh, help self-help videos. I've talked about bowling and pro shops. So I've made all of my mistakes in the 60 takes that we did doing that. And so when Kimberly told me you got one, you know, this, you got one take, make it happen. I was like, okay, let's do our best. <laughs> so, um, but it was, it was great. Um, I, I just, I went early to just familiarize myself with it because it's, it's a lot smaller than what you think it is when you're, when you're looking at it on TV. So for me, if I can familiarize myself with the people or with the atmosphere, uh, I, I feel more comfortable. And I, and if I'm able just to be myself, uh, it's, it's almost game over at that point. Right. Yeah, you absolutely. Uh, you definitely were yourself on television. You acted like the, the true professional that you are. You were, uh, you know, extremely supportive of Patrick's run, uh, which kudos to him on a fantastic week. Also, uh, Patrick Dombowski. Yeah. And uh, you could just tell by your 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 fan base. I'm assuming a hundred more would have been there if they could have been there, but just your fan base. I mean, I'm looking at your family in the crowd. I'm looking at one of my favorite people on the planet, Pharaoh Williams, there losing his mind watching you win. I mean, it was it, like Rob said at the top of the show, it, it kind of choked. It choked a lot of people up, man, because anybody that knows you knows that that was sincere and real and in every single aspect. And in your interview where you're talking about wanting to encourage people to continue to pursue this game, like follow your footsteps. That's, we just need more people like you in, especially in this sport, because it's, it's, it's like hands down. That's, that's what I feel. I may be fucked up in a lot of different ways, but um, you've got it there. And it's, um, and I can't wait to see what else you're going to do. And not to mention one of the biggest things that have, that's been floating around about your victory is the love for the traditionalist bowler is coming back. The standard <laughs> fingers, one arm bowler. Everybody was thrilled to. Everybody's talking about hey, and a, and a regular standard traditionalist won a major, which was actually kind of cool. I mean, and you have the greatest bowler in the world as the only two hander even on the show. But uh, the other question that I wanted to ask you was, when you open with five seventy nine against EJ. Did you go into that match with the same mindset that you had for the whole tournament, or did you kind of mentally prepare yourself and say, I got to beat each EJ Tackett. I got to give him every ounce of what I've got right now. Don't hold anything back. No holds barred. Or was it, is that just what, you know, what happened in that match? Yes. Uh, I made a joke with Tim Mack before the match, and I said, the only way that I'm going to beat EJ is if I shoot 900. That is exactly what I told Tim. And he's like, okay, well, let's try to make that happen. And I said, okay. And yes, uh, I will tell you that you, I mean, anytime EJ is on the lanes, you know he's going to throw a six, seven, eight bagger at you. Like, like it's nothing with just like this, just throwing shots, you know? And uh, I was like, I have to give it everything I possibly have and put myself into this new level of focus against EJ. And I was focused amongst everyone else. I was just as focused against Simo, against Jake, against Gio from Storm, against Sam Cooley and Patrick Dombrowski. I, I had the same focus, but I told myself when we got onto the lanes, I said, whatever he does, do it twice as good to try to give yourself a chance. And to start off the first match with the front nine, Tim comes up to me. He's like, you weren't kidding. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I said, well, I said, I'm going to do my best and then wrapped a 10 and spared and shot 279. And I said, I said, all right. I said, if I, even if I shoot 879, I'm still close. I'm only 21 pins away. So <laughs> then I proceeded to start striking the next match and got to the front nine again. And now we're talking about a pattern that's a 1.7 to one pattern. And I just go basically, 
you know, uh, how you put that nine plus 18, you know, 19, you, what, 20, there's 24, I'm gonna, come on, dear honest, 24 frames. And so I struck 22 out of 24 frames. But going into that, it's it, my whole thought was, all right, let's try to get to 300. Because again, yes, I could be up by a number over 100. But we never know what's going to happen on the games after that. I can mm-hmm. lose my look. Something can happen. And that 100 pins could could easily be be 50 pins within two frames, 30 sure. pins within five. And now you're looking at, I got a mark in the 10th being up by 100. And mm-hmm. so finishing off that game and shooting 300, I was like, wow. And at that point, looking at the score and looking at the kind of the deficit, the deficit between the two of us or between him and myself, I was like, all right, Deron, you still have a lot more bowling to do. Don't use up all of your energy in this one. You still got Sam, who I think has one of the meanest ball rolls I've ever seen anyone have. Uh, it is absolutely incredible to watch, but to see it in person and you see the force and you see the power, it's it's it was incredible. And I just was like, I got a lot more to go. I have a lot more to go, but I know uh, the, the, the match against Sam was just as important against EJ because – win or lose i'm on the show i have a chance to be on the show and so because then i can go for the final three and then maybe test my chances with that i don't know but uh every single match was important in its own way getting yourself out of the blocks getting yourself comfortable in the morning to understanding the lane breakdown the next match to bowling against two of the the number you know two of the three best bowlers in the world in the same bracket and then adding, you know, someone whose ball roll, when it hits the head pin, they all fall down, you know? So I, I just, I had the same amount of focus and I, you know, it's, that's the best way for me to put it. I mean, you, so you bad. went to a murderer's row, I mean, in match play, like it, it's pretty impressive that the talent you were able to beat. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, and not in one game matches either. It, exactly. Against yeah. that, I mean, yeah. over and over, that's good. Sorry. I mean, I mean, no, that's fine. I mean, that's 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 stupid good. I mean, that, that's just how locked in and focused you were. Um, getting back to TV day, being the number one seed, they always say it's the hardest to win from number one seed because you only get one game. Uh, and, you know, you could be going up against a guy who's bowled two or three games already, running the ladder, and is locked in. Um, were you nervous having to wait that long? Like, I'm sure waiting for those previous games to finish – not knowing who you're going to go against, um, and, and no disrespect to, to PD, Belmo should have won that match. I mean, and you're you're probably sitting here at, at one point thinking, "I got to beat Belmo, the five time Masters champ, you know, the four time Masters champion, to win." Uh, I'm sure, I'm sure there wasn't any added pressure, but uh, just just sitting there waiting for your turn. What was going through your mind? Uh I was actually looking at the show from a TV on the other side of the bowling center. Um, I, I couldn't watch the show gotcha. and I just wanted to watch the show and pretend like what I would do on the show, even though I'm already on the show, if that makes sense. Sure. Uh, by watching it and seeing it, it becomes a reality. But if you take a look at it on TV, you're like, well, if I was there, I would do this. And so that's how I really prepared my. What happened? Oh, he just kind of. <laughs> no, it's just, I'm just I'm, wow. Like that's it's like it's so brilliant what you just said. Think about yeah. everyone sitting, sitting at home and like watching somebody miss a uh, putt in golf. You know, God, you got to get aim further left. This this one's got a bigger slope. Like if you're watching it, it you always know exactly what to do when you're watching. From, exactly. <laughs> from uh, so from when you're watching from home. And so yeah. my home was, you know, a pair of lanes and a TV right in front of me watching it and saying, I don't know why they're so far left. I may not have to be that far left if I was ever on TV or, or look, being in that situation, the type of bowling balls they were using. So it helped me It helped me develop the game plan on what it is that I wanted to do while I was waiting. And, you know, you kind of see the guys, everybody has their own focus. They all have their own modes. Some have headphones on, some are just focused, like they're sitting and they're staring and they're, everybody has theirs. But for me, I just had to continue to have fun with it and continue to say like, this isn't the first you know, this isn't the first show I'm going to make, you know, this is just the, this is the the first show that I've made in, in this position. And now being the number one seed and taking a look at it, I was like, all right, well, as a number one seed, you got to take a look at it. You have to understand the lanes. You can talk with the reps a little bit to get a, a better understanding to make sure that what you see is actually there. And so 
I will tell you, it, I was I was definitely nervous. Um, but the more I looked at the TV to put myself in a comfortable position, made me feel so much better by saying, "Hey, now this is your chance to wrong that mistake that you may have seen on TV when you were bowling." So it's it's a little different, uh, but it really made me feel uh, made me feel really comfortable with what was going on. Dude, that's, that's, you're the first person to do that. You just ever. outed this great secret. So I, let's uh, let's edit that part out just for his sake, so he can keep using that. Yeah. Uh, technique. So yeah. the software drop. We'll edit that part out. He was just in focus mode. <laughs> you don't have to say he's been watching TV because that that is a brilliant move. It's like you. It really is. I never even thought of it. Like it's next level. You're literally taking yourself out of the element for those moments. Or yeah. just you have it yourself you. He said it. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's my what my question uh for you d was uh the pattern itself looked like it held up pretty well throughout the course of the week we didn't see a ton of guys loft in the cap and obviously we always see guys loft in the cap at some point but once it got to the title match did you have them playing pretty similar to the way you had them all week no um not at all the uh, the right lane was significantly tighter so the right lane played like uh like a few games were bold on it and then uh the left lane played like it was fresh like it was completely fresh the backs were clean and oh, so wow. um it played yeah it, they, they played different i felt like they played different every single day and so i was using a different type of bowling ball to try to simulate the same thing that i saw the previous time so that was kind of my thought process on it when i when looking at the tv pair and i again when you when you start to look at bowling you don't just look at bowling balls and layouts you take a look at the mills on the lane, you take a look at the shape of the pattern, you take a look at how much is in the front part of the lane and understanding, okay, well, there was only, you know, there was an insane amount of rev rate, don't get me wrong, but there's a lot of rev rate to the left of me and my bowling ball lay down is not even close to that. So for me to think I have to be so far left, it's that's, that, no, I, I don't have to. And the amount of mills that they are starting to use in the middle part of the lane, and I've done this as an experiment, and again, I'm not, these are not secrets. These are just things that I've done to help prepare me for this, for this position and to be able to speak with you guys today. And so if anybody wants to take note on it, they can. By, by looking at it, <laughs> um, by looking at it and seeing how many mills are in there, we actually did at, uh, at my bowling, at the bowling center at the, at the casino, we bowled for six hours on the same, like tried to play the same part of the lane and see how much lane breakdown we were going to see. Now, yes, we saw a lane breakdown, but when you actually walk the pattern, we saw that the, the, the lay down, because of how many mills that they're using now and how the oil is in the front part of the lane, doesn't break down as bad. And so I was able to say, okay, with only two, you know, three people bowling, two of them being further left than me, I'm okay. I can still what, stay what I'm doing, maybe use a ball that's a little bit cleaner, tips a little bit more down lane, but other than that, I feel like I can still play my A game. Were, were, were you surprised uh, that Belmo stayed where he was against against Dombrowski? Uh, to be honest, yes. Yes. I was, yeah. I, uh, I was a little surprised because we practiced on the pattern and we were able to bowl on the pattern uh, off the lanes. And uh, I never saw him that far left at, at all. And so right. it really did surprise me that he moved as far left as he did because – I mean, you're talking about 33.34 mils, I believe, is what we bowled on. And uh, that's a lot. That is a lot. If you get a little measuring cough syrup cup, you can put it in there. And that's 30 mils right there, you know. And so yep. you can see that spread out onto the lane is is a lot. So, I mean, it surprised me. but I mean, that explains his slow roll, too. Like, he had a real slow ball roll, too, though, uh, it's really, really in that chuggy. Game, where if, really. Yeah. And uh, in order to face up, I would assume, I mean, but you, you saw it, it, it looked, it would look good, but it, it would snap a teensy bit high or, uh, or again, that, 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 what was it? An eight ten where it was almost a two eight ten. He just sailed it wide. I, I mean, by a, who knows, a baby yeah. hair. I'm trying <laughs> well, to keep it You're going. exactly right. Oche. And as D said on a 1.7 to one pattern, even missing by the, uh, the hair, as you call it yeah. is, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, just think about it's it like easy. this. Well, we, we manscaped, so we can't say that. If, if you miss, thing. if you miss two at the arrows, it usually equates to four down lane. We just yes. don't realize that because on a typical house shot, you have a funnel. It'll, it'll, yeah, yeah, exactly. But imagine, you know, missing by two at the arrows on a one point seven to one, basically a flat pattern, as yeah. flat as you can get without being one. One to one, uh, right, right. 
But I mean, even that that's and that just is a testament to how good these guys are. I mean, D, you averaged well over 225 in all your matches on that pattern against the greatest bowlers in the world, as you said. And mm-hmm. that's the kind of shit that unfortunately sometimes television doesn't allow the general public to see. Very unfortunate. It's you know, like we we get we get the pleasure of watching Tiger Woods for four hours every single Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday hit, hit a golf ball or Scotty Scheffler. We get the privilege of watching Greg Maddox or I don't know uh, God, who is the, the Dodgers pitcher that Clayton Kershaw. We get to watch them pitch six, seven innings every four days. We see the good. We see the bad on television. You, you may have done everything you had to do and you have one wonky game on television and that's kind of where you're judged. People don't get the privilege of seeing. They don't see the 48 games prior. They see okay. the 12 shots exactly. you threw. And they're like, oh, man, look at totally. this freaking chucklehead. Not you, of course. Exactly. Oh, I can do that. I can do that. Up. You can't do that. Because if you could do that, you still couldn't do that. Day, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, uh, you are you are in Detroit now for the World I, Series. I am in Detroit for the World Series. Uh, you know how flights go. Uh, first flight was canceled because of weather. The next flight, there was a plane malfunction. So I had to fly to Vegas at noon. So I had to go back to Vegas and then fly from Vegas to Chicago, rent a car in Chicago, and to get to Detroit in order to be here uh, tomorrow to start the doubles of the World Series. Wait, wait a minute. You mean Tom Clark didn't fly you on the private jet for being a Masters champion? Tell me about it. Like, oh. I was. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. Um, sometimes I have. Does Tom Clark really have a private jet? I just blame right? Chad Murphy. Yeah, we can blame. Yeah, sure. There you go. Oh. <laughs> Who who made a TV appearance too? <laughs> On freaking yeah. Easter, he ruined my damn Easter. I was like, "Wait, that's this freaking clown shoot, son of a beastie!" <laughs> who are you bowling doubles with? I'm bowling with uh, Ronnie Fujita. He's from the oh, nice. uh, NorCal area. I think you you would know you know Johnny. He's oh, yeah. been bowling. Uh, he's been bowl- Ronnie's been bowling for a long time. Um, and so yeah, and he's you know extremely solid. Bowled for McKendrick. McKendrick. Mm, that I don't remember. I can't remember. And it's funny because I'm staying with them all this week, uh, Brad Kyle and and, uh, and and Ronnie. So I got to ask him, like, hey, what school did you pull for a game? It was, I know it was out here in St. Louis for sure. So it could have been, uh, could have been McKendrick. Sounds right. Yep. So I'm here and uh, I mean, you know, I'm, it's, it's another tournament. Um, and I, 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 you know, it's always going to be in my mind of what happened and, I just want to be able to create more memories. Lindenwood, thank you. I Very appreciate nice. it. You went to Lindenwood. Um, nice. Yeah, my, my buddy Kevin went to Lindenwood for a second as well. So um, my, uh, nationals, my nationals teammate, Shea Bittenbender. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Great. Hell of a yeah. school now that you think about it. A lot of people. <laughs> Brian Valenta went to Lindenwood. Jesus. Oh, yeah, that's there's there's a lot to it. Uh, but yeah, I like I said, I completely I, for, I forgot what school I knew he went to school out here, and I do now I do remember that it was Lindenwood, so we're good. Um, I heard, uh, are you gonna let Brad and Kyle exploit you like uh, because that's our job here, Duran? That this is this is a, no, we're just kidding, we're not exploiting anybody, but no, I, I love their show, honestly. I think they got a freaking great show. They that's the, the only time we can see behind the scenes stuff because they don't even they don't. Post it on the damn TV at all, unless you got Bull TV, which yeah, I got everything. D, uh, yeah. what was I just gonna say there? Son of a gun, I had I a, know, you, you tell him how great oh, he looks. Did you, uh, my best friend Stephanie hit me up earlier and told me something about a uh sprinkler head malfunction in the arena bay? Do you know anything about this? Uh, over at in Detroit, uh, yeah. I, I didn't go that far, so oh. I, yeah, I, 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 heard, uh, I heard something happen where all the sprinklers, uh, went off in the arena in the arena bay at Thunderbolt and they're trying to figure out a way to get everything fixed before all the shows. Oh, that man. is correct. We're going to hear anything about it. that. Let us know. And hopefully everything's yeah, yeah. part of the oil pattern. You never know. They started doing like the, uh, <laughs> yeah. the, the way fire oil, oil, oil pattern. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know. I didn't even walk that far. They had the doors closed. Um, so I'm assuming that they didn't want anybody in there. They're going to definitely try to get it all fixed up beforehand. But, uh, I didn't know that I was I kind of walked in through the party section of Thunderbolt and I was talking to one of the employees and, and I said, this is an amazing bowling center. You have everything that you can tailor to, in bowling. You have birthday parties and groups and then you have, you know, your main stage for bowling and then you have like a nightclub bowling type thing going on. Like you attract everything with that 
with that bowling center. And I think, and I was just admiring it because of the history behind it. I was admiring it because it's so big and you don't see 90 lanes in a bowling center anymore. So uh, I was, I loved it. I thought it was great. I, I, I was there last year for the masters and I just like walking around. I feel like I can walk around that bowling center for hours and just kind of figure out a new spot, a new place in it. You know, it's, it was, it's a great place. My first Pretty hard to figure out. I'm sorry, Johnny. Go ahead. My first ever trip to uh, to Thunder Bowl was the World Series when uh, Simonelli made the shows at Cheetah and Viper, and him and I were actually rooming together. 30, 30 days in Detroit that that uh, World Series was. I, I'm not sure if it was the first one. It was. I want to say 2009, 2010. Okay. But, um, it was. It, it. You're right, and if I remember correctly, I think they also have a casino upstairs. Like a little, do they really? I, I, you know, I, don't I know that Taylor Lanes in Taylor, Michigan, they have the center section where you can play poker. But I'm almost positive at Thunderbolt. I, I think I, I, I think I remember going upstairs at Thunderbolt and there was like a little makeshift casino there. Hmm. Like, I could be wrong, but you're right. I mean, it's you got three completely different bays. I know that they finally upgraded the lane surface in the arena bay. It used to be an older surface, which I absolutely love bowling on. I love bowling on that. <laughs> but uh, it is, um, I mean, it's its so sad that Tom Strobel's gone, but um, it's nice to see that that place is still like the pinnacle bowling center in the Detroit well, area. It's between that and Reno to me. Um, the Reno Bowling Center, I love that too, because they have the little history museum down there. I think they, they still have the other lanes um, in that that area at the very bottom before you go up the stairs to the main section. Mm -hmm. um, even with the remodel, it was still great. I loved when the seats were up there because you can kind of sit back up there and just watch the entire arena. Like how often are you able to watch 70 plus lanes uh, all bowl at the same time? And 100%. so I, I loved it. You know, those are between uh, Detroit Thunder Bowl and uh, the, in Reno. I, I love it. I, I that's the, those those are my those are my two my two favorite bowling centers by far. Yeah. I'm not going to lie and say that I, uh, I love Reno. Obviously I'm left-handed. So yeah. I, I love, I love the stadium, but I just kind of wish it was somewhere else in the country. And I think a lot of people would agree with that too. Just, uh, yeah, kind of getting a little sick and tired of reading. I'm definitely looking forward to going back to Baton Rouge next year. Someplace a little bit different for USBCs, but, um, I, I got to ask now, I mean, does this win, does this change any plans? Did you have full intentions of, of, of trying to continue on the tour full time? I mean, does this change anything about, I mean, obviously it changes so much. I mean, that's a massive check you got, but with the money comes the opportunity to maybe present yourself in different ways than you otherwise would have. So what are you going to do now? Has anything changed in, in your plans? So, you know, the, the weight that was laying on me um, throughout the entire getting my getting my card. I got it about six. I got it six years ago. But then I started bowling as a full time professional in 2023. And the weight of the PTQs was was is was weighing on me. And now not having to do those anymore and being able to financially support myself, my bowling self with with you know, the check that I got. Um, I'm so excited to say that I'm going to continue to go out there and bowl. I'm going to continue bowling the events for as long as I can. You know, we're greedy when it comes to bowling. One title isn't enough. So right. I want, definitely want to get on TV again. I want that feeling. I want that rush. And so um, it, it, it changes everything. Um, I'm still going to be at the pro shop. I'm still going to work with people. I'm still going to do my coaching when I can, because, you know, the PBA is only, you know, 12 or 13 events. And so for the rest of that time, uh, I, I got, I'm going to go and, and continue to help everybody as, that I possibly can when it comes to coaching and understanding bowling ball reactions, understanding themselves, how they look. You know, there's so many different things. And what I mean by look, not how they look, but, you know, how how they look on the lanes, what they see, what they want their bowling balls to do. Because, you know, we all see the same thing differently. And I'm just trying to touch into that a little bit more if – your right or left eye dominant. If you ever close your left and right eye when you're bowling, you can see how that focuses. And that is a big, big thing that someone brought up to me. Also about how much you you move your body. You know, if you throw, if your body's angled more than three degrees, and if you want to release the ball in front of you, you're going to throw it in the gutter. And so, you know, stuff like that, I love to teach and show them a different perspective of the game. Uh, and with, you know, with this win and going out there and bowling on the national tour, all it does is just help me get more knowledge in 
what the PBA players are doing and what I can do to help this player be the best that they can be. And I touch on this with you go to a doctor's office. If you're going to a doctor's office, you're going to go see a professional person or that specialize in whatever is going on. You're not going to someone who is, I think that's it, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not really too sure. You're going to walk right out of there. But for me, you know, the thought of professional bowling is one thing, but I can tell you is that I am a bowling professional. And so a bowling professional is, you know, teaching layouts, teaching coaching, uh, teaching about, you know, your emotions and then going on and, and just doing, you know, doing everything that you can think of with bowling. Uh, when I, I try to help out with the junior program as much as I possibly can with JBTs, uh, because Jeff out there, I said, the first junior to ask me is going to bowl. And so that's that's just how it is. And who I don't care who it is. They can average 70 or they can average 210. You know, that's that's how I work because everyone deserves the opportunity. And I say like, OK, and I'm working with one of the kids and I say, all right, regardless of what's going to happen, people are going to remember you for you and not for how you're bowling. So if you're bowling bad, hey, you have all the right to be upset. But when when you're bowling good, you know, keep it under control, keep yourself composed and but still smile, have a good time because, you know, we're out here doing this because we want to, not because we have to. So if that if that kind of gives you a a little no bit of um, words have ever been spoken. <laughs> yeah. Such a breath of fresh air to 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 hear somebody say that. I mean, it really, really, really is. But Rob, what do you I feel like I'm hijacking again? No, you're Go. fine. Uh Deron, I I'd be remiss if I didn't ask this question as a host, given the the culture that we're in now. Um not a lot of black people bowl on the PBA tour. Uh PBA even uh, posted that you were the third black man to ever win a PBA title, all of them being majors. Does it mean a lot to you to represent as a black man in a sport that you love? And do you hope to inspire more uh, black people to, 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 uh, to go bowl? Oh. And, uh, and, and I mean, it has to mean a lot to you. It, it really does. And, you know, yes, you know, being black, African-American, however you want to politically say it, um, but, you know, I'm still a person first. And sure. I and again, I will still take that in and be a part of history. As you guys know, I love history. And to say my name is in the history of being, you know, one of one of only three blacks to win a PBA title and all of us having a major, um, you know, you just get the chills just even thinking about it yeah. because that is very, very hard to do. And I, I got a message from Gary Faulkner and he's like, hey, you know what? Good luck. If you need anything, just let me know. And that, again, was just so relieving because I knew he said, let's have let's let's, you know, come and join me. Come and join us. And I, you know, I've never met George uh, Brenham or GB3. Is, is that yep. what they yes, um, I've never met him? And so it'd be so nice to meet him because he started it all for us to give us a chance to go out there and compete. But yes, for the black community, you know, TMBA, we there are a lot of bowlers that bowl that are black and they are sure. very, very, very good. Um, I, I can, and so they're, they're amazing. We, he mentioned Pharaoh. I mean, Pharaoh at one point had the record for 800s and 300s in USBC in, in history. Pharaoh's so, obnoxious how good he is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and being, you know, growing up in LA and, and seeing the pave that he had Pat, he, that he had started for me, it was, it was a, it was a good pave because the better you were, Unfortunately, it was harder to do things, and that's okay. That's a good problem to have. Um, but you know, just during he was so good during a time where there wasn't any social media the way that it is right now. There, there wasn't a you know you can you couldn't look up stats on USBC very easily. You couldn't search the internet for different tournaments that he has bowled. And so with Pharaoh being, I mean, he, I, I mean, if we want to talk about you know African African American bowlers between Pharaoh and Go Hagen. I mean, these, these guys are absolutely phenomenal. They're, they're fun, they're, I mean, I've never seen two guys strike at will ever. And for me, I will nine, I will nine spare everybody to death. Don't get me wrong now, but <laughs> like they I'll go double six, two all day. See, and I, and for me, it's, you know, 10 pin strike, double 10 pin strike, double 10, you know, like <laughs> that's, yeah, you that's did it on TV to win the masters. Yeah. That's all you did. <laughs> 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 I say, you know, I'm really good at getting nine. And so, um, but I, like I, like I can tell you guys, man, this is just, 
I, I'm opening up the door for everybody from all ethnic backgrounds, um, you know, demographics, you name it. You know, the, the struggle is real for everyone when it comes to doing what it is that you want to do and being very passionate about it. And sure. so for me doing this, I just want to let everyone know, you know, black, Hispanic, um, of, 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 of an Asian descent. It doesn't matter. Like you, everyone can do this. You can go out there and do it. Um, I would go to work and then work again and then practice and then drill balls and then coach and do it all in the same day because I was like, I can do this. I, I, I can do this. And I want to be able to continue doing this. Like I had said to the PBA, I want to continue doing this so I can do it for other people so I can help somebody. One of one of my one of the kids that I work with tell me, hey, I just I you know, I just won JBT because of your help or I got an amazing phone call yesterday. Uh, my buddy of mine, his dad texted me and said, hey, I just want to let you know, I bolt my first 800 with these balls that you had drilled. And I was like, are you kidding me? And we would talk about layouts and he's a full roller and how the balls would shape and he's and teaching him how to use each bowling ball. And just doing and, and hearing that is it makes me feel so good. It makes me feel like, all right, like I am doing it. And this is and I want to continue doing this. And so with these accolades, even though without these accolades, I was still working with people every day and helping them. But with these accolades, I really hope that people trust a little bit more in my knowledge and allow me to help them get to their highest potential. You're like and the I, bowling and, version of Gandhi. This is freaking amazing. <laughs> true. And I just I, I saved the neighborhood, by the way. I just had to tie a freaking knot in the wire. Literally in the wire. I wore rubber galoshes. I saved the whole neighborhood. Everyone's got power now. Good job. Just to let you know. Let you know. So everybody good. watching in Ochoville is, can get back on YouTube and Facebook. Tell them where, Rob. No. Um, okay. So I, I wasn't trying to make it a race issue, Duran. I, like I said, I preface it with that's the culture that we're in. I noticed somebody in the, com in the comments said uh, he's a man and a bowler leave race out of it. But a lot of people don't understand unless they're in your position. Yeah, or in exactly. a black man position. If you don't see a lot of people other that look like you, you know, <laughs> you want to be one to inspire more. Right. And I mean, oh, I want to. I just want to. It do shouldn't my matter. Thing. Right. But I mean, it does kind of. Right. Yeah, exactly. You know, even. With, uh, you know, the fellow bowlers bowling the PTQs that can become competitors. You know, I talked to one of them today and I had said, I would rather bowl you in a title match than than watch you, you know, fight and claw your way through the PTQ. Like, that's what I want. I feel like everyone out here who's who's bowling these PTQs are phenomenal bowlers. Cortez, Eric Jones, Dio Bernard, you know, the up and coming young talent. And man, oh man, if I can do anything to get those guys out there because, you know, one hit. They stone, you know, let's use the lefties, Johnny. You stone a nine pin when you need it and you miss by one. You know, that does not take anything away from you as a competitor. But for these guys, I just feel, I feel for them because I was there. And yes, I can honestly say that I, I've worked my entire life to not be in that position anymore so fast after bowling on the national tour for just a year and some change now. But for those guys, I will sit back behind them. I'll help them with their bar reaction. I'll help them just calm themselves down so they can get themselves out of it because these guys are just that good. There are so many good bowlers out there that we never get a chance to see True. because of the PTQs. And I, I, there's nothing that I can really do other than give them the support that I can with it. But, you know, that's... That's what I want, man. I really, really want to be able to just help those guys feel what I feel right now because it's an amazing feeling. Um, you know, Johnny, with your dad being, you know, a legend of the game. I, I mean, I bet you, you know, every every moment that he was on the show and every moment that he won, he was just like, this is a moment that I want everybody to feel because it's such a good feeling. It's such a great feeling. It's um it comes very easy for my dad. It's because my dad is a very emotional person and my dad cares more about everybody else more than himself. My dad is the kind of guy that will park his car and feel like if he moved too far forward in the spot, he'll go back out to the car and move it. So he doesn't bother the next person that tries to park in front of him. <laughs> my dad is uh, extremely, extremely emotional, but my dad is, very, very soft-spoken. And my dad has always been the kind of person whose heart is genuine and pure and very much like yours. And um, it's um, it was easy for me growing up with him as a dad because every person I've ever come in contact with, my dad is the only person I can say this about, 
every single person that has ever come up to me and said a word to me about my father is your dad is a class act. I love his stories. He's such a great ambassador for the sport. Nobody has ever come up to me and said, your dad's a dick. Your dad thinks his shit doesn't stink. Your dad is a, is a fucking hothead. Your, your dad drinks too much wine. Your dad, nobody has ever said a derogatory thing about my dad because my dad has spent his entire life taking care of every single person he possibly can. And um, so for me, that was part, most of the time it was absolutely awesome. The other parts of my life have been kind of tricky because I don't know a lot of people like that. And I, I love people genuinely also, but I've, you know, I've also had my fair share of issues throughout my life. So, uh, which I mean, nobody's perfect. Right. But I think that, um, I, I think that like what Stephanie said, representation is so important and you are, like you said, a bowling professional in every single walk of life. And I think the thing that most people that watched you win this week and are learning more about you is forget the, forget ra race. Again, I know nothing about what it's like to be underrepresented. I, I just don't. So I'm not even going to pretend like I know anything about it. I think it's fantastic that you've added your name to a list with two genuinely wonderful people. George Brown is one of the great greatest people on earth. And I hope to God you get to meet him one day. Mm -hmm. It's ranked contracted by my dad yeah. with Brunswick when he won, when he won the uh, TSA. So I, and then the world open, which they don't consider a major. <laughs> but, um, I mean, aside from that, I think what most people took away from you is you're a bowler and you care about the sport that is now providing your, your life, your livelihood and you're, and you're maximizing on it. And I think that it, we'll get them back. And I think that's the thing that people need to analyze as, as the big picture here, because that's exactly what D Ron has done for the sport. Like many others have prior to him and many more will continue to do, but he's carrying the torch extremely, extremely well. Yeah, and what a story though, too, like had, and, and honestly, like the shame of it is the people that he uh, influenced knew it. Had he not won, would we know it? Would they know it? Would the world know it? Would Kimberly Pressler know? It? You know what I'm saying? Like, this is, uh, you know, a, a, a vaulting what me too. All right, I'm good. I'm fine with that. We proved our point. <laughs> so, but this is a vaulting moment. Like, this literally is about, uh, you know, we talk about it, like reaching the next level, reaching the pinnacle. This guy is reaching the pinnacle. Now, and now everything that, when people would say, well, what's he ever done in bowling? He don't know. Now he can say, hey, guess what, mother effer? I told you I knew my shit. I told you I could do it. And he did it. How many thousands upon thousands of teams go out to USBCs every year? Oh, yeah. oh, and, and How many of them have eagles? How many of them have gone there and beaten everybody that goes there throughout – the months of March through through June. A lot of few. I mean, it's a lot of what few. Was, what he was talking about earlier with the, the TNBA, especially when I was on the West Coast, they, the talent that is out there that nobody gets to see is unmatched. I mean, I thought growing up on the, on the East Coast and then Bowling Action, New York, I mean, there's some tough sons of bitches you out here. You saw people. You saw the shit. Tough sons of bitches out here. I'll be the first. I mean, this is a scary, scary, scary. It used to be a scary place to bowl because not only do you have the talent, but you got the loud mouths of the East Coast. You got that that Northeastern, you know, I'm fucking better than you mentality out here and people let you know about it. They slap shit out. They get in your face. They do all that stuff. On the West Coast, they just beat the living shit out of you and they're quiet about it. No, it's What's worse, actually? Think, I, mean, I you think, think both, like... Well, this is what I was going to say earlier that when I when I lost my train of thought. When you that look at happened. old school professionals compared to new school professionals, you used to see a lot more excitement in the in the older generation. Like go back to like Bob Vespi and Brian Voss and Ricky Ward and Steve Hoskins, Del Ballard. I mean, those guys were pumped up, amped up every single time they threw a double on TV. The new PBA has gotten so technical. There are so many intricacies in the sport. There's so much science backing every – you need – Duran said he brought 17 bowling balls to the Masters and used 10 of them throughout the course of the week. There is no time 
to get that excited anymore because the second yeah. you slip up even for a frame. They're back with the ball wrap. They're doing their thing. They're yeah, freaking. They, they have to be more level-headed now because everybody is so good now. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> oh, we got man. him as our guest tonight? Hey, oh, Rob Booker, welcome happen. to the show. Oh, Thanks for being us straight up five. I looked and I was like, you know, I didn't know how much battery life I had left. And then I was like, let me try to, you know, figure out what I can do and be like, hold on, let me get it. And then as soon as I was going to say, hold on, it said no. And I was like, <laughs> in the and middle. It, and, of and it's always that like five minute <laughs> delay too. Once it dies, you have to wait like the stupid five minutes. I know. Minutes. Yeah, like it just died. You can't just turn back on when I no. What is that? You I plug the shit minutes. in, it should be on. Why does it have to have this one? Come on, that's, that's, a, that's a rookie move, bro. Hey, you you know, didn't plug it yeah, but uh, he don't know the outlets in the area. He's in a spot like he don't even know where the hell he's at right now. For Maybe he's just really he's intrigued with the condo. He's the battery. He could have been. Um, he could have been in Detroit. He could have been in Ochoville for all he knew. The guy had to take four flights, three cab rides, and a guy to rent a car. I just figured it was a rolling. On the guy, Rob. Yeah. <laughs> well, because you know Ocho left for a second, and then all of a sudden I left, and I was like, "Oh no!" And I was like, "Okay, Rob. Hey, let me just. I'm I'm here. Let me just try to get everything back up and going again." <laughs> Um, we don't but, strike this is the kind of person that would like give us an Irish goodbye. So, yeah, well, <laughs> this was just I kind of figured you were coming back. Oh, a hundred percent, you know. And like I said, you had left off on a, to at, on, a on a topic, and um, I, I know it's assuming you know with, with things that your dad had said, and then I kind of caught you in what you were talking about. So, I'm really curious to hear what you're saying about you know the PBA and the direction that they're going. Oh, I, what I was, I, I said a lot of shit while you were gone. I, I went on one of my Johnny rants, but what. <laughs> What, what I was basically trying to get at Get a t-shirt, earlier... call the art department, and say Johnny Rant. That's another t-shirt. We got to make it. Okay. I, please, please, Rob, get to the art department. All right. I'm, all right. I'm on it. Thank you. What I was saying was, um, compared to the bowlers of yesteryear, it seems like emotion and like it, raw excitement, you don't see it as much nowadays as you did with – the, the older generation, the Dell Ballards, the Ricky Wards, I mentioned Randy Peterson. Um, and I think it was because of how technical the game has gotten. Like you said earlier, if you bat your eyes for even a second or you're not in dead 100% focus, there are hundreds of guys out there that can that will beat you. So I feel like as, as emotional of a person as I am, especially when I bowl, I've had I, at my level, which is nothing like your guys' level, I've had to learn to tame myself down because even throughout the course of a league night, I'm making ball changes, I'm making zone changes, and that's against house hacks like Oach. But if you're bowling somebody like EJ where you know, like, man, I'm going to fist pump that messenger in the fourth frame because I caught a double, and the next thing you know, EJ gets up and he's just nonchalant, or Chris Braith, they're, they're nonchalantly just walking up there, and now they got an eight-bagger against you. You gas one in the fifth frame, and now you two eight ten, and all of a sudden you go go, go from pacing two forty to pacing two teen, and it's there's no time for that anymore. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of the the calmness that is the PBA tour now is residue of how great everybody out there. But also, are you JP? Are you trying? Are you? I, I'm not. I know what you're. You're not trying to say anything. You're saying what you're saying, but like you're saying that there has to be a lot more thought process, a lot more thinking, a lot more cerebral approach, maybe because of the technology, the oil patterns, the, the technology of the bowling balls. Like you said, he brought 17. He used 10 on the first. So, you know, like we were talking about. So Duran, he also said like, you know, if even on TV, if you, if you hitch it just a teensy bit, you threw it good. Now you're back with your ball rep, you know, so there you're already back to thinking you're not, you're not there using your emotion. You're not, you didn't slap out the 10, so you can't run anything out and you can't think if you're so wired up too sometimes. And I think that's where he was going at a little bit. I'm taking it to my level because I get a little fiery just on league, but um, you know, with, with the Ricky wards and the, the Steve Hoskins, you said like, you know, they're using only a couple of different bowling balls, so their thinking would be their hand position or something, I, I guess, is where is where you're going, JP, a little bit, or what? Tell me Just, about it. For instance, most old-timers, mo most, I, I want, for, for lack of a better term, non-progressive thinkers, when you talk to a, a traditionalist. Why are you will, being so political right now? Like, because I am, it's residue of the guest we have because he is so polite and well-mattered and well-spoken. So I'm trying to be less fettered or more. Are fettered. we 
No, I mean, we're polite. We're just what, what I'm. Yeah. What I'm just, I'm, yeah. All right. So, Johnny, so, just 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 say it that way. And, and again, you've known me for for a while, and it's always been this way. It's never. Uh, I'm on. You know, I'm not sitting here saying hello. Right. You know, right. my name. No, it, I've always been this way. So, um, go yeah. ahead. No, speak it how you mean, and then I just have something to 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 tell you with that to, to add okay. on to it for sure. I'll I'll make it quick. Okay. Most most traditionalists will say. These kids nowadays, they don't even know what hand position is. They don't know how to trick a ball. They don't know how to fall it back from the fifth arrow. All they do is burn up the front part of the lane, and they overpower it with their two hands and their speed, and that's not bowling. That's not bowling, yada, yada, yada. That is what the majority of people that are either against two-handed or don't like the way that the game is going – We'll talk, and they'll say, "There's a little day, Abe threw, Lakota in that I threw too." A blue by the way. nitro. I threw, and I, I had a blue nitro, and I had a red turbo, and that's all I needed. And if the fronts were hooking, I had to spin it through the front more. Well, guy, if you went out on tour now, you still need to know how to do all that. But on top of that, now you need to know the surface that's going to match the topography of the center you're bowling in. You need to know breakpoint shape, breakpoint angle, trajectory. You need to know everything and then hope that the ball's going through the pins downhill properly that way you carry because if you don't have all of those elements those elements today you're you're left in the dust so whereas i I'm not i understand and fully appreciate the one view but i hate that they're so skewed in their thought process that it can't even open up their mind to seeing how much effort goes into the sport now that's yeah. so, so it really is a thinking man. It's it's more obviously it, oh, you're gonna be a physics major or a freaking chemist almost to like uh, to be able to understand the surface, the topography, the the oil, the friction. You know, you, this isn't stuff that's you know a sport thing normally. This is a I have a science degree. This is what we learned literally. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're you know what? Like I said, Johnny, you're absolutely right. And when, when drilling balls for, for customers and you talk to them about it, you know, I only need one ball and it's okay. You know, that's fine, but it depends on where you want to take your game. If you're talking about bowling league, if you're talking about bowling tournaments, you're not gonna be able to do it one, with one ball. Unfortunately, like for me, I would have no problems if tomorrow they said, bring two balls and go out there and bowl, but that's not the game anymore. Unfortunately. Now, yes, you can go out there and bring two balls and average 180 when the field is averaging 220. You know, you did bring that one ball, but like you had talked about layouts, uh, I had two attention stars, one at a four and three quarter inch pin, one at a four and, and a half inch pin. And that quarter of an inch of a difference, a quarter of an inch, like we can't even measure, you know, a quarter of an inch right. made that big of a difference between me getting the ball to push that foot longer on the lane that hooked more and the ball reading up early and going big four. You know, that quarter of an inch makes that big of a difference. Now, you can try to make the adjustment with your hand to – get the ball to push that extra six inches. But why do that when technology lets you know, hey, you don't have to do that. Just move the pin a little bit. And that's, that takes, there's so much thinking that's involved in bowling that now the bowling balls and layouts and lane play and knowing just those things help you not think about it so well. I'm sorry, think about it so, so long, so hard. And you can focus on you executing the shot. And, you know, it's unfortunate because some people may disagree with me on that. You know, everybody has a different type of A game. Your A game could be manipulating your hand. Your A game may be picking the right bowling ball. Your A game may be, um, you know, knowing, you know, any, anything, you know, there's there's so many different things, but knowing what, what to do in this situation in the fifth frame when somebody sneezes in China, you know what I mean? Like knowing how to, to handle each situation, everybody has their A game. And when you're out here bowling, unfortunately, a person's A game is what's going to work. You may get close with your B game. You may be able to cash with your C game. But right now in today's game of bowling, you you got to have the equipment and you got to have the knowledge of the equipment in order to, 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 to succeed. And even at a league level, I mean, it used to be, yeah, you could bring a two ball roller to league. Now you see people with two, three ball rollers. And because you want to go out there and you want to do well, you want to average 220 or 230. So yeah, it's that's the best way I can put it. Totally. Couldn't agree more. And it's funny because we used to, like, make fun of the guys at league. Like, oh, you're bringing six bowling balls to league? Fucking moron. And now it's like, eh. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> not, maybe, not a bad option. 
Not I'll about a no. triple and a double tote, maybe. Yeah. This week. Now, now, what year are they from, though? That's the question. Yeah. So, well, I mean, yeah. If it's your <laughs> bag, I know it's a wrecker, a winner, and a gravity shift. So we're we're talking, you know, solid ten years for you at least. My oh, friend. they were all such. Those were those were. I was gonna say he's got a great bag. I think yes. that's why. He <laughs> but uh, wait, what was the? Hold on. You said uh, the wrecker, the winner, and the gravity shift. Oh right, right, okay, got it. yep, and the plastic ball, yep, and the plastic, ball. plastic ball, and a plastic. Mine are even ball. older, so we don't we we don't need to get into those. So he's all like, you know, the the, the hard rock with two fingers in it that you have. It's to actually just, a square. Yeah. It's literally oh, a square. square. I kick it. I kick <laughs> it down the lane. I make all my ten pins. Missed the fourteen flint, this year so far. The Fred Flint special. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys! You guys are great. This is this is awesome. Thank you. I'm glad Thank you're having you. a good time, and we're 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 having a good time with you as well. I have to talk about the prices, right? We haven't we haven't, oh, we haven't actually talked. brought it up yet. How did that even happen? How did you get picked to be on the show? Were you just did you buy tickets to be in the audience? No, and no, you're no, the no. coolest guy in the world for that. By the way, you're literally the coolest guy totally. in the freaking literally. world. Literally, like, why? If it's you never did anything ever again, yeah. I yeah. can't believe I never uh, knew it. You know what? I like I'll tell you. It was it was just really simple. Uh, back. It was, I mean, it, again, it was 14, 15 years ago. And so if you had a certain amount of people that wanted to go, you got tickets for free. Okay. And the group that I went with was the Citrus Belt USBC Association. And they got everyone together because they like doing game shows. And they said, hey, dear, you want to go to The Price is Right? I said, yeah. I said, sure. Okay, cool. And I had just turned 18 at the time because you have to be 18 in order to go on the show. And so with my sister being a year younger than me, she couldn't go and was upset. And I was like, oh, that's fine. I'll probably come back with a car or something. Right. And <laughs> God. and so um, by going on there, uh, I, you know, they so the process, it's a long process. It's a it's a it's an all day thing. I think the recording was like 45 minutes to an hour, but you're there two hours early. You're spending two hours interviewing and then you have to wait. And there was a lot that went on with it. And the process has probably changed now, because, again, like I'm telling you, this was over a decade and a half ago. And so basically all you do is you go and they interview and they say hi you know what's your name where are you from and, and everything so i started off with my name is Ron, the price is right winner booker that's who i am <laughs> and the the producers were just completely floored by it because nobody said like hi my name is Ron booker no i was like i'm the price is right winner booker and just so they're the, handpicked the uh the contestants yes I thought they, like, they were, do oh, no man, I'm, oh, so, I'm so sorry i'm not like, happy about it I just pulled back the curtain on our, our childhood, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. FYI, um, now again, so he watches uh, while he's leading the tournament. He'll watch along the other side of the bowling alley on a TV, take himself out of it. People, there's a strategy, and the price is right. You just got to be badass and tell them what's up, and then yeah. you're going to be picked. <laughs> FYI, you learned to yeah. be straight up five. All the secrets are out, Duran. I'm sorry. Gosh, I'm sorry. You know, but no, it, you're good, man. I yeah, just, just, I should, we'll edit that out again. <laughs> um, and so, you know, by going through that process and then sitting on and sitting on sitting in the the crowd, and it's a it's a really small room. It's not a a big room with a lot of things that go on. It's a small room. It's very intimate, and everyone's just talking. They give you what's going on with the show, and they start the show. Well. There's a name card that has your name because you can't hear the announcer calling your name. It just says this person and then the next person. And so I'm just looking and just kind of minding my own business. And then everybody's kind of hitting me. They're like, they, they picked you. They picked you. And I was like, what? And the, we had those glasses. I forgot the the character where these glasses came from because of the April Fool's show. But mine completely fell off because I'm like <laughs> jumping around and moving my head. And my head is so big that... Uh, uh, some glasses like that just never stay on my face and that's why throughout the entire thing you see me you know <laughs> i'm doing this the whole time uh because they didn't fit and even drew during the commercial break was like do you need some more glasses and i was like yes he's like i'm sorry they only come in one size and i was like well <laughs> so um so they kept falling off and um yeah that was that was about the price was right um i did as a junior bold a perfect game the day before and so everyone was, you know, the, the producers were like, you know, you're a bowler, you guys are a bowling organization. And that's why if you heard it in the clip, he had said, you know, he just bowled a 300 in real life because I had just uh, bowled a perfect game like that day before or something. Yeah. And, um, you know, and then missing the first car, I was a little upset because at the time I was going to Cal State Fullerton and I was taking the bus three hours and I was like, oh, a car would be great. Oh, I missed out on the opportunity. And so... I I was like, okay, whatever, it's fine. And then getting the dollar on the spin, 
uh, you know, some yeah. of the refs were talking about, you see, that's D-Ron's touch. How do you spin the wheel and then you automatically get a dollar on the first spin? And, uh, and you know, just kind of going through that process as well and then getting a chance to win a car, uh, a, another car through the showcase and the lady overbidding. I will tell you, the crowd does kind of give you a, a hint of what it is that you want to do. And so before I said one dollar, there was everybody in the crowd that was going, you know, one dollar. One dollar, one dollar. Well, she and what said, she over doubled the bid, right? I mean, like, yeah. like, like you got a pretty massive number. She was thousand. like, it's like eight million dollars, and it's twenty <laughs> yeah. grand. Yeah. And uh, so Damn. I was like, ah, I was like, okay, well, I, I knew how the show worked because I used to watch it with my grandmother and and Bob Barker. So I knew that if you bid a dollar, you only lose if you're over. You're okay if you're under, you but you can be under by thirty-three thousand and change, like you did. Yeah, right. exactly. Right. It's, <laughs> Dude, and so, what, yeah, I've never seen this before. Did they tell you why the first car that you didn't win was on blocks? Why was it on blocks? That's yeah. freaking horseshit. So, who was uh, that? So, I'll tell you the the show was actually filmed in November and broadcasted on April Fool's Day. So, everything that was going on throughout the show, you had to figure out what the April Fool's joke was. Oh. I see. I thought you were going to say it was filmed in Camden or something like that. <laughs> yeah, and so um, that was on blocks, and then the, the appliances were turned around. The yeah. car was parked backwards. Yeah. The If you saw the uh, the ladies who were... Oh, that's why he said you couldn't see the... Right. Oh, no that makes shit. sense. Yeah. And so, um, and then all the models were walking backwards instead of forward. Um, then there was a lot, and then if you heard the the wheel when it was spinning, it was doing quacking instead of the actual. Doo -doo 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 oh, I didn't hear that. Yeah, so if you guys take a look throughout the show, oh, son of there's, a bitch. I missed yeah, that there's part. so many April Fool's jokes that are going on in it, and what they really wanted for someone to do was to say, "I won on I won the showcase on the Price Is Right," but you have to take a look at it on April Fool's Day because of April Fool's jokes. So. That show saying, hey, you know, I won on The Price is Right, but you got to take a look at it on April 1st. They're like, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> and that's great. Yeah, so that's so that's what happened. And uh, I, it took me like six months to actually watch it after it broadcasted on TV because I was like, oh, my God. Like, and that's and I will tell you guys, this is the honest, honest truth. That is why I focused on how I look on TV because <laughs> I was not prepared to be on TV like that. Hair was just all over the place, and I didn't. I, shirt was six sizes too big, and, and I was just like, if I ever get a chance to be on TV again, I want to make sure I look pretty good. And I and I would say, with all the, the still shots and stuff that they got from the show, I was like, okay, at least that's one thing I can take off of it from now on. So, now, I have to ask, what you yeah. do with the what you do with the Ford Flex? Uh, so I kept the Ford Flex for two years, and then um, I sold it because there was a, I wanted a Scion TC because they were a big thing back in 2007, 2008, Remember and I was that. able to get one in 2009. And you know I bought it to fix up, and I ended up buying to buying it to just never fix it up because I didn't realize how much bowling was taking when it comes to the financial part of it. So the car, as long as the car got me from point A to point B, I was like I was good. And uh, yeah. yeah, and so I bought the I I had right home like, back to point A, but yeah. at least you got the point B. Yeah, exactly. So I and the thing is though, because I had the car, I was always giving people rides, and I was like, if I get a two door car, maybe nobody will ask me for a ride anymore. It didn't change. Um, no, no. But yeah, I had the I had the Scion TC for uh, for eleven years after that, and so wow. selling the Ford Flex because it was a brand new model. Ford Flexes weren't even out. Uh, that was the first year that Ford Flexes came out, and. They actually brought that from another state or a couple hundred miles away for me to be able to do that. That's, that's um, so, really cool. but yeah, it was, that's, yeah, that's, that's what I did. So I had it, loved it, but it, you know, being 18 years old and trying to drive an SUV all different places in California just got so expensive and I really wanted a Scion TC. So I had bought a Scion TC. So what about the fridge and the the dishwasher and the? Hey, we, we we yeah, we kept it. We we kept the fridge and the and the washer and dryer and and all of that. I was you know living with my dad at the time, so I was like, hey, um, I I honestly don't have a place, and so you guys want to, <laughs> <laughs> you know, do you guys want to use 
use this washer and dryer and stuff. And we had it for, you know, about 10 years in, in Pomona before everyone kind of went Where, through. Where's your name tag? You still got the name tag? I ring? sure do. And because I'm, if I was at home, I got I you. I got went you. into the closet and I still have the shirt. I wore it the one time. The name tag is still on it. I didn't wash it, but I mean, it was only for a day, so it's not that bad. Um, but <laughs> I, I said, I'm going to keep this and preserve it as its natural form. And so I still have it. Even I won't even use it as a as a Halloween costume. As what are no, you? No, no, no. That, that's sacrilege. Price is right. Well, <laughs> you know, like that's, that's a legit cool. name tag. So what? If you what, shadow box, if you shadow after, box your master's jersey and you shadow box your uh, your Price is right. Price is right. Yeah, that's going to be it. That's nice, for sure. Uh, it's like yeah. something uh, after, not, after, not a lot of people have wins, in their trophy room. After he yeah. wins one of the World Series of Bowling tournaments, he'll head back home. He'll he'll picture it up. We'll put and it on the Straight Up Five podcast. Uh, Facebook page and say, here's perfect. the actual, yep, we'll do the trophy, the two trophies that he'll have now, yeah. and then the Price is Right picture and all that stuff. We got. I, I think I would do that, and I just don't know if it was a coincidence that I almost, I was on TV. Almost to the day! You were only two days! Day. Almost to the day. Only I two days know. off only, right? Uh, one, one day. One day. One day. One day. Oh, shoot, I'm a, oh my god, jeez. What, one oh, day. Sunday, off. the 31th. Universe 31. Thirty one, so yeah. Maybe so, next year, so uh, on April first or March thirty first, you play the Mega Millions a couple times if you don't already. I, I think for real. I think that's a good idea. But Might thirty mean fifteen years year. to the day. I, I I'm still thinking about it. Fifteen years to the day, I went from, you know, the Price is Right to a, a major championship in bowling, and in literally almost to the day. If it would have fell any other day, it would have been on the day. So. Dude, that's a Disney movie, right? Like, I mean, yeah. that's just a, it's it's such a remarkable story, and it, it's such a cool story to be like, I won the Price is Right at eighteen, and almost you know fifteen years later, almost the day I won my first PBA title, and it's a freaking major. I mean, that's yeah. like that's a dream come true, bro. Well, like, it, it is, and you know, it was even brought to my attention. Somebody brought up to me and they said, "Hey, when you won an Eagle at Nationals, what pair were you on?" And I was like, "Well, I was on the first pair," and they're like, seventeen and eighteen. I said, "Yeah." And they're like, do you know that the TV pair was 17 and 18? And I was like, oh, come on. Oh, come on now. Exactly. Wow. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you're right. And so I don't know. You know, a lot of things in life have um, significance. And so I just I just think it was. Um, leap year mess it up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Well, actually, the, uh, the, the four leap years that happened all in between kind of helped it. So we can't <laughs> say true. that. That's very right, true. well. That's fair. Without true. the other leap years, he would have been four days prior. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah. That's, no, you're right. You're absolutely right with that. So <laughs> you know, there's so much significance what was going on, and I, I'm just like I said, I, I'm, I'm absorbing it all. Um, I have so many texts and so many Facebook messages. So for anyone that's watching and I haven't responded, I, I do apologize. It's just there are so many, and I just want to tell everybody thank you so much for all of their support, for their continued support. And just because, you know, I, I have this this win under my belt doesn't mean I'm not going to talk to you, even if you live, you know, you're you're in New Jersey or somebody lives in Florida or Texas, which Oklahoma, Kansas, we can still talk layouts because I, I enjoy doing it. I enjoy talking it. I enjoy giving a different perspective on it. Um, it's just during this time, it's just tough because, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm on a podcast with you guys and I've had a few other people reach out to me and want to do a couple of interviews, too. And so. I, I, I will. I promise I'll, I'll get back to everyone and, and let them know how much their support means to me. It helped that 10 pin fall late. It helped me trip out the four nine. Like everybody in the everybody who was watching blew at the TV to try to get that 10 pin to fall down. I know that they did. They're like, go get down in there. Stop. I jumped. Their and I jumped. <laughs> I was jumping. And you got more tournaments oh, to yeah. win too. Totally. That's why you're busy too. You ain't a one yes. and done guy. You're exactly. out. You're still, you, you're focused. You're working. Let the yes. guy work. Dude, yeah. <laughs> you, your, your attitude's infectious. Your smile's infectious. Just watching you having so much fun on TV and here throughout all of this, you have such a huge support system right now. Like, it's amazing. Like, D-Ron Mania is run a wild, brother. Uh, <laughs> like, right. it's just, it's infectious. It really is. Thank and, uh, you know, it, it comes out. Like, it just exudes. Out no, of it bleeds like, out, you know for I mean? sure. It, it, it really does. Through. You can and feel it through the TV. You can feel it through the camera. Absolutely. Even here, it's, it's, it's really wild. Absolutely. And and having Rob Stone back on the call was really, really cool because he had a great call on your win. And, uh, and the crowd chanting, Booker, Booker, Booker. Like, dude. <laughs> 
I, 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 if you never won again, like your, your, your life is, is like, you're, you're, you're blessed, bro. Like, seriously, like, I, I really it's so am. Cool. I, it's I, history. It's history. Speaking, speaking of that real quick, are you exempt from PTQs now? He is. Mr. I, I, I will tell you, I am for, and I mean, unless they change the rules tomorrow. Um, but I can tell you right now, um, the biggest weight off my shoulders is that I am exempt off of that. I do not have to bowl another PTQ forever. Uh, well, for, no, what I mean forever, meaning like within the foreseeable future. I mean, I, I'm, I don't have to do it. And so it just gives me more opportunities to make shows. It makes, gives me more opportunities to go out there and bowl and to learn and to keep passing the knowledge on. That's, that's what I wanted. And that's why I'm out here. I'm like, I told everybody I'm going out there and I'm taking the beating for us. So when we get back, I can say, Hey, you're bowling this way. You need this ball. You go and do this. Okay, cool. Why? Because I learned it from the PBA. I learned it from the best bowlers in the world. I learned by asking questions. I learned by taking notes. You know, I have a huge notebook that I write everything down in. And to be honest with you, like I, I have the notebook and I'll show you, it just kind of has just different things about bowling balls and layouts and, and how I feel about certain things, because all of that does matter. And I can go back and look at it and say, huh, huh, that's why it didn't work. Because if we document it, we know. And that's why sometimes documentation when it comes to certain things are just really, really important. And so, um, but I definitely have a notebook with just hundreds of different layouts in it, different types of bowling balls. If I'm bowling on a different, like bowling a tournament, okay, which which three are going to be good? Okay, now if I only could bring six, what are the other three? Or if I can bring the whole the whole kit and caboodle, like I'm going to bring them all. But if I'm just, I always try to put myself in a scenario and try to work on that scenario when I'm practicing, meaning, hey, I have two balls that don't work. And these are the only two balls I got. And I got to try to get the 703. Can I do it? You know, stuff like that and different practice regimens, because if you're practicing different scenarios and different things, it's going to help prepare you for lofting the gutter cap or, you know, playing closer to the gutter or using a ball that you may have to change your hand position just because you don't have the other bowling balls with you. And so I try to do that. And then I document it. I say, Deron, you went 168, 188 doing this. Why? And what could you have done better at this time? So there's a lot of different practice regimens that I do like to talk to some of the students that I work with because you you can go out and bowl, but when you go out and practice, that is a big, big thing. Going out and practicing and going out and bowling, they're different because we love the game. Sometimes we do just want to go out and bowl like I do. I want to see what can I shoot? Can I, can I you know, shoot 820 or something and have a good time? And there's other times where I don't want any scoring. I don't want any, I only want one pin up and I'm focusing on bowling ball reactions. I'm focusing on what the bowling balls are doing and not so much on score. People are saying they'll see my score and I only have the head pin up and it's like 300, 300, 300, 300. And they're like, well, what's going on? Because if you hit one pin, you knock them down. But it's more so uh, training myself to say, okay, can you hit the pit, the head pin from this angle? Can you hit the head pin from that angle? Because if you get the head pin, you, you can almost get nine, you know, most of the time. And so there are, there are times when we all have bowled and we can't figure out how come we're not hitting the head pin, you know. And that right there is just a training tool that I use to allow myself to focus more so on the bowling ball versus the result. And another thing, because this is, you know, I'm, I'm filled with so much stuff. Um, if you're ever working with someone and if you have the ability to set down certain pins, um, what I've learned and what I've done is I set down the, the one, three, five, nine only. And so that teaches you to get your ball to go through the pins correctly because your ball needs to go through the pins to hit those four pins. Mm -hmm. So you, when you're practicing, you can say, okay, can we set that up and see how many times your ball is actually going through the pocket. And you'll see sometimes where you leave the nine pin because it deflected or you missed a nine pin because it drove too hard. And these are all such cool tools that I want people to know that they, they can use to get themselves to be better, to help themselves understand bowling ball motion and how the ball's going through the pins and, you know, stuff like that. That's a first for this show too. And we're always, we're always sprinkled with a little bit of firsts where uh, getting into the practice regimen. One thing I noticed that I thought was just super cool. I don't know why I thought it was super cool. You were hooking your spare, your spares at, at the single pins, weren't you? Yes. And that's like they frown on it, but JP Sr. has said forever 
and maybe it was the way they bowled on what the patterns they bowled, but I know it's still zone pattern-ish a little bit, but uh, he said, I always hooked him at my spares. He was like, that's the one thing that I didn't take in the modern game was I always hooked him at my spares, and I don't see it, and they say you shouldn't do it, and uh, on a house shot, anybody can, obviously, but oh, yeah. you were doing it. But yeah, you were doing and, it right there, well, man. Here's the thing, though. We are trying to win. And no, no, you, I don't care. I, I thought exactly. it was great. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I tell everybody. They're like, well, do I go straight or not? And, you know, I missed the nine pin earlier in the week going straight at it. And so I said, okay, I'm not doing that again, at least until after the show. And so I, I saw a nine pin and I'm like, I'm going to hook at it. I'm going to hook at a three pin. Because, again, what, what am I getting by looking? How do I look just going straight out of spare and missing it? And missing it. Exactly. Yeah, and missing it. You know, I, I always tell this to people. I'm like, why are you trying to look cute going straight at your spares? Just just pick it up and, and move on and keep on going, you know? And that's that's why I, I do what it is that I do because, I mean, I bowled a clean game, first ever game on TV, and what does everyone say? Be comfortable. Do what's comfortable. So, a game, also, like you said. A game, just be comfortable. So to take a look at it and to see that there was a nine pin, and I already had an, I had a, you know, I was already basically, if I missed it, I would, you know, he would have to strike out to beat me by one. But you knew the outside but, wasn't flooded either, where if you did miss a little right, it was, it'll still yeah, come back. Exactly. So you had and, to know you, the knowledge of the pattern. And that's what, yeah, I get yeah, it. I totally and the get thing it. is, though, like that nine pin, when you're trying to go straight at it, could feel like it's 500 miles away. 100%. I feel but, like there's a little more room for error almost when you have a little bit of a hook spot. Well, to especially do it. when it's, that one pin and that one pin could have been career changing if I missed it. This could not have happened right now if I said, "Well, they say go straight at your spares, so go at your, go straight at your spares," and I miss it to the right, and and then Patrick goes all three in the tenth and beats mm -hmm. me by one. You know, I don't think I would ever be able to live that down. But when we talk about comfort and what it is that you're able to do, when I left the nine pin, I had said at least it's not a ten pin, and so I went up for it and hit the nine pin and said, "I'm done." Just stay behind the foul line. I don't care if I hit three pins on this next shot. I'm I'm just gonna stay by, stay behind the foul line and just let it go and and that's it. And so no, oh, even as you threw the spare, you centered it. I mean, it was you, you threw it out a little wide and then boom, it flew right back in and it was and they 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 glossed over it because you may I don't know if they, they don't mean they glossed over it. They just you know he's always saying straighter is greater. You got to remember that you guys got to throw straighter spares and that's why these pros do it and. I just thought it was a cool thing. Nobody mentioned it. I'm doing it because that's the shit I do. And good. <laughs> it's out there now again for the world to see. Well, yeah. D, I guess my question about it is is, because, sure. is simply this. Is it is it condition dependent? Oh, 100%. Yeah, that's, well, that's, that's what the outside is not flooded. So I obviously think that's he, why a lot of the players frown on the, on the hooking because from week to week on tour – you take the I condition out of it when you throw it straight, ball, of course. Every single time, right? Whether it's a yeah. strike or a spare ball. I mean, so I do understand the philosophy of throwing a straight simply because it takes away. It takes that, the condition that, out of it, well, for yeah. sure. No, but that's, absolutely. That's, that's, you know, absolutely. I, I don't I don't hook but at. the same breath, if I can curve it at a right side spare, I'm curving it at a right side spare. And, and, the, and that's the thing. And people just need to say like, yeah, because here's the thing, though. You, somebody tells you, you know, you it's a $50,000 pin. You're going to do whatever you can to pick up that pin. I don't care who you are. And I, I, you know, I shoot at my 10 pins, obviously straight. I shoot at seven pins straight and four pins straight because it's just a slight change in angle with your body and you can be able to get the ball over there. No problem. Um, but when it came to something like that and keeping yourself comfortable and keeping yourself composed, I mean, yeah, hook at them. Do all I care about is you bowling your highest game. All I care about is you winning a tournament. And so the last thing I would ever want somebody to tell me is, because you told me to throw the ball straight at my spares, I missed this spare and I lost the league or whatever. And no, I never say that. I never say that. I say, hey, you guys, pick up your spares and let's keep working on the strike shots, making sure that we're leaving ourselves makeable spares. We're leaving ourselves spares that we can make and and that it doesn't take us so far out of our element when we get into pressure situations. And I, if I'm not mistaken, I think I left all nine spares, you know, sure. and so there wasn't a possibility of chopping the four off the seven going straight at it mm -hmm. or chopping the, the three off the three, six or the six off the six, 10 or a two, eight. You know what I mean? I tried to do my best to play the game of bowling. And when you're bowling for a major title, when you're bowling for, you know, I, it, and when you're bowling for a, a purse that big, you're sitting here saying like, okay, well, 
whatever got me here is what I'm going to do right now because this is what matters. And again, a fifty thousand dollars spare is 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 very is a very expensive spare if you try to do something that's not within well, your the, norm. The field scoreboard field. don't give a rat's ass if you threw it straight, if you hooked it, if you kicked it, if you made it. That's what the scoreboard tells you basically. And the scoreboard yes. said you won and you're the champ. And it can never, ever be taken away from you. And that's nope. the goddamn beauty of it. Exactly. And the thing is, though, you know, the next people that make the shows, no one's going to remember. Deron hooked out a nine pin to win. No, like, of course right. not. That's, right. I just no. thought it was a badass thing. Yeah. Like, no, they're not going to do that. So, you know, there's, there's, everybody has their perspectives. And I love just talking a little bit about my perspectives on it because my perspectives, I feel, it's just the common majority at this point because everybody thinks it, but no one ever wants to speak it because they don't want to seem anything less than a professional. Right. Mm -hmm. That's and exactly it, right. That's, yeah. He's nailing it. He's nailing it, man. And this so, guy. you know, from, from a professional standpoint, it's, I mean, you, you ask any one of them, we can go through, I even have, you know, three professional bowlers upstairs. And if I said you have to hook out a three pin or whatever you have to do to pick up the spare, what are you going to do? And they're going to say, I'm going to do whatever it takes for $50,000 for a hundred thousand dollars. I'm going to do whatever it takes. And that's exactly my point is do what you got to do to be able to, I mean, obviously within reason, but do whatever you got to do to, to, to be successful out here. I mean, they are Belmo would, Belmo would hook out a three pin guarantee it, you know, or whatever. So, um, yeah. My final question to you, Deron, and in, in looking at your style, you're so smooth and you're, you're almost a throwback to the previous era here. Um, you know, you don't have a high backswing. Uh, your, your tempo is, is pretty solid and on point. Um, who did you model yourself after when you started bowling? So Parker has always been my absolute favorite, even though he's left-handed. Um, it was between Parker and it's, it's weird because my game is modeled off of, off of a lot of lefties. Um, you know, <laughs> Parker, it was, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. It's Parker, yeah. Mike Albee, Johnny Petraglia. Um, those were the, the main guys that I wanted to see form. I wanted to see style David Ozio, um, as a righty, he was my absolute favorite. Um, and so, yeah, so that's my guy. David Ozio was, was my guy watching it because I don't think David Ozio has fallen off a shot in his life. You know, yeah. and so I don't think I mean, if, if, it may be on record somewhere, you know, 30 <laughs> years ago, but he, you know, he was my favorite. And um, when it came to releases, uh, Devin Bidwell was uh, a prominent bowler in, in that area as well. And I loved how he set the ball down. He just always set it down so clean. He had a decent rev rate. Um, he had a really high rev rate at the time for what I've seen. And I, I was like, well, I can't rev it that much, but I can definitely try to set it down. So I worked on that uh, with him as well. Uh, and then when it came to the PBA, I was looking at the different releases that a lot of these guys were doing. Uh, Prather has just one of the, the like his his release is just absolutely I mean, it's impeccable with what he's able to do with it. And I so love I loved watching his release and I would watch it on slow mo, um, even looking at EJ's release. Again, we're not talking rev rate. We're talking about how they come out of the ball right. and what they do. Um, you know, back in the day, it was it was Chris Barnes as well with how he just kind of rolled his hand over. And he's one of the few guys that went from this point to, to here with it. And I was like, Oh, wow. Like there was just, you know, everybody has played a point uh, because I'm looking at their game and we all say, we all do the same thing differently. I can spend my entire life trying to mimic a person's game. And guess what? I, I'll never throw it like them because I'm not built the way that they are. I learned how to work with my game with how I was built with how I was structured and what it is that I'm able to do. And so all those guys, like trying not to fall off a shot, making sure your thumb is up. I believe, you know, your your dad, Johnny, uh, was, you know, an advocate on letting the ball go and having your, your thumb go this way with it, you know. And, you know, there's just so many different things that I took from all the great players because they're great for a reason. And if you can take something out of their game that you can use for yourself, then, yeah, go ahead and do it, you know. Um, but that's that's kind of how my game got modeled and, um, you know, it's always going to be as we get older, things start changing a little bit. So your game modifies, but that doesn't mean it's not going to be as it's not going to be good. It's just be a little bit different. And um, so, yeah. And to be able to show a little bit more of the conventional style of bowling on TV, uh, you know, I'm glad of that. You know, I, again, it's just kind of what I do. I've always just tried to keep everything together and people are looking at me bowl and I tell them I'm like, well, it's, I'm kind of boring to watch because I just kind of <laughs> walk up there and just kind of 
let it it's go and, and keep on going from there. There's no wasted movements. Everything is one piece, and it's why you get nine. It's so silky much. smooth in play. Always, always in play. play. Always in play. Always yes. In play. Thank you. Thank you guys. So, uh, but yeah, that's, that's, you know, that's just a little bit, a uh, little bit more about me, about my game and, and how I think about, uh, think about bowling now as, as a professional. And I can now say this after, you know, a few days of a sink, sinking in as a, as a major titleist. And so yeah. it's yeah. just the coolest. It's just, you think about it. If that's as cocky as you're yeah. going to get, we'll take it. But I was hoping for a little more. Well, no, I'm okay I, I'm with not, it. I'm no, totally it's okay. okay with it because I know you're not. I'm, I'm Joe. I'm goofing with you. We're this is we're, we're unfettered. Here, <laughs> yeah. So, um, but you know, like I said, this is you know this is amazing. Um, and like I, I mean, I can go back, you know, with stories with Johnny and, and talking with him and, and him dealing with the frustrations that I was having, trying to get to the level, trying to get to that next level, talking to him about bull and ball motions when I was representing the Brunswick brands with him, and he's just like, well, what do you think about this? And and what do you think about that? And I was like, okay, I'll go and try it. And then I'll I'll text him. Uh, you know, a couple months later and saying, okay, I like this, but, and then I see him in Vegas because I went to Vegas so much being in California at the time, or he would come out from Vegas to California and we would chat it up a little bit. So, you know, we, we talked a lot about it and uh, we met each other at a regional and he was just like, wow, you know, and I was like, but wow, you're throwing a bowling ball with your name on it, you know? So <laughs> like, <laughs> that's exactly what I told him. He's like, I said, how does it feel to throw a bowling ball with your, well, kind of your name on it, but with your name on it, he's all kind like, of. it's pretty cool, you know? It so, um, cool. but yeah, like that's, that's kind of what we, uh, what we did and, and just, it just kind of developed after that. And um, we, yeah, I, I really don't have much more to really say about, about that on other than it's just, like I said, it's an honor to be sitting here with you guys and, um, for him to reach out to say, like, you wanted to, to, to talk with me. And I, I really hope that having this conversation with me was worth your while. And, and, you know, it was, it was fun. I had a great time. This is, this is the very first one I've ever done. And so um, I'm, I'm glad that you guys were the first to be able to oh, do it. It was a pleasure. As crushed well. it. We crushed it. We're glad just judging we're by the, the comments and the amount of people that are in the chat and are watching on all the platforms that we offer this show. Yeah. Still. You were undoubtedly one of the most, awesome guests we've ever had and i and you were honored we were honored that that you took to us because we we fuck around a lot on this show we, we do some stupid shit on this show but when it's all said and done we all share one very very common trait and that is our our passion and love for the sport for the sport and anybody that achieves the the pinnacle of what we all so deserve at some point in our lives it's it's our honor and privilege to have you here so thank you uh, thank, thank you. you for the kind words about uh our, our past conversations at regionals and uh hopefully i'll get my ass back out to the west coast uh for good because i'm, I'm missing it terribly with each day that passes especially when it's hailing outside so um <laughs> i mean i'm i'm where am i i'm in detroit and you're in new jersey correct yeah, or, I, okay so we're yeah we're we're in, we're in the same same time zone and doing everything right now um but uh, like I said, it's just, it's, it's, it's everything that I say is just open to everyone. And, uh, I, I just, you know, I just want to help. And there's been so many people just, you know, talking out frustrations with, with Johnny, uh, you know, before a block is, is, is such a big help because again, a lot of times people, they know you, but they never get a chance to, they never get a chance to see you. And that's why I had that statement of, you know, can you see me? Because I can go places and the same person that, would say hi to me just kind of walks by me and said in like nothing and i'm just trying to figure out like i'm i'm literally the same person i'm 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 here i, I will congratulate you i'll say hi and i'll make my point to say hi and bye because you know we never know what moment you never know that moment may never come again and then sure. something unfortunately happens you know like i never got a chance to say goodbye and so i always do my best to uh to 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 talk to everybody. I don't care who you are. You can be, you know, you can be Belmo. You can be, you know, a, a, a small kid that, that needs. You can be John Mazza yeah. in the chat here. Yeah. You can be speaking of smooth lefties. Yeah. <laughs> so because you have a uh, grapefruit sized balls day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we love John. He's, hey, real you know, quick, because yeah. I'm sorry to cut you off. And I know we're, we're, we're wrapping you up. Bring yeah. Captain Allen's comment back up. Sure. This might be the first time in bowling history that we have a Price is Right winner and a Wheel of Fortune winner in the same. Whoa, get what? out of here. That's 
pretty. Oh, pretty that is. Yeah. Oh my God! Only yeah, on we, straight up yeah. five, man. I'm we not are, sure there's many times we're gonna have a, a Wheel of Fortune star and a Price is Right star and a major champion all kind of. In I'm all guessing season. probably yeah, probably like, never. Yeah. Deal or no deal, we got to try to find that. Let's make a deal. Press your luck. We got to find all of us together. <laughs> we got to find them all. So. To be able to do that, and then we can put us all together and be like, "All right, this this is this is what we all do." You know, we'll, we'll get the guy who rigged the press your luck game, who knew the pattern. Oh, no. That's what we're gonna do. The guy that that made the game shut down. I oh, know who him. he is. I'll get, get him. him. I know everybody. Get out of here. Oh, sure, do you have anything else for for day before we steal any more of his time? And which, by the way, we, we always ask for you know forty five minutes to an hour, and you gave us almost two tonight, which is uh, thank you again, Dave. I mean, yeah, honestly, can't, can't you're thank very you. welcome. This was like I said, this was great. And I know that it's gonna be time to time to go and get up because uh me and Ronnie, uh, my goal is to uh you know continue this going with Ronnie and my 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 luck, my I wouldn't say luck, but bowling doubles with uh with people have been pretty good. I won an Amarillo's a pretty good size Amarillo's doubles tournament with uh with Jacob. I won an SABT tournament with a guy that I didn't even know. We were in the same area, but he just needed a partner and I was like, Yeah, let I'll bowl and we ended up winning it. Um, and then winning an Eagle at nationals. And so the PBA, the PBA doubles, this will be really cool to, uh, share this win. If, you know, let's just say it, you know, to share this win with Ronnie and, uh, to help get him out of these PTQs. Cause that's just one, that's one less person that has to go through it. You know what I mean? And that's, that's what I'm looking for. So that's awesome. if anyone can make it happen. It's you. So yeah, I, we, we can do it. Remember I, my, my statement is not, I did it. It's we did it. And so, Every time, oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, you know, it's, you know, we did it and uh, I, I just, I just can't wait. I, this is one, this is everything. Um, this is everything that I've wanted. And, um, you know, this show is, this is, this is great. And if you guys ever need anything from me, um, it, I'm very easy to get a hold of and I'll be more than happy to assist in uh, whatever you guys may need for sure. Well, well we, up on that, man. we absolutely appreciate that. Hey, what a selfless guy, too. My God. This now I feel so oh, inadequate, man. Jesus. I feel so unaccomplished. Feel like it. Yeah. Well, man. well, I'll blow smoke Jesus. up his ass because he deserves it. All hail King Booker. Oh goodness. <laughs> There's no king. You know, it's just uh, again, I, I've always had this this type of personality. And uh this isn't this isn't a fa- I mean, if you've known me, you know this isn't he's he's putting on a show. It's the same thing. As soon as I get off, I'm probably gonna text Johnny and be like, Did I do okay? Was this good? You know, and that because that's just You're horrible. I am. So, um, but you guys, like I said, this is this is amazing, and uh, I really hope that everyone uh, in in the sport of bowling in the world uh, they get a chance to see that you know we're all normal people. We're we're all normal people. We like to have a good time. We like to have fun, and uh, you know, I I that's that's a that's me. So, damn right, well, man. Well, Dion, we do again. We appreciate you being here and giving us your time, as busy as you are, and yeah. We absolutely wish you that. Give him his, his plugs, Rob. His plugs. Is there Let's anything you'd like to come on? Is there anything you want IG. to plug? Your socials or anything you got going on? Not bowling ball plugs. <laughs> We're talking like this is your uh, your You know, here, it, it your is. I, I've never been a big. I've never been a big person on social media, and so everyone knows that uh, when I post something on social media, it, it's big and it's significant, and it it, it draws your attention. Um, but. The thing is, though, I don't have to, to plug anything because I, I know that if you know me, you know. And that, that big statement is, if you know, you know. And I don't yeah. have to blast it out there. I don't have to say it. Um, you know what I'm about. You know how I work. You know that I'm, I'm, I'm in it for the long haul. I'm in it to, to, to continue this feeling, to continue inspiring, to continue giving uh, great advice to everyone on what it is that they can do to, to be better. But, um, you know, I had said it before at the very beginning of the show is uh you know and i and i love it because it just it, it resonates so much that you're remembered for the person and not for what it is that you do and so if you know the person that you are is what people are going to remember they're not going to remember the time that you missed the spare but they're going to remember the time that you got so upset when you missed the spare you broke the wheels off your bowling bag you know they're going to remember that <laughs> they're not going to remember the fact that you missed the spare and it was like ah oh. you know they're going to remember that so it's just that model in, you know, I, every, you know, there's so many great people out there and uh, I just, if, if I can, you know, be in their corner to help them get to where they want to go, then I will feel completely honored with that. 
Well, we're honored that uh, we were your first. We we broke you in. We broke your yeah. podcast, Cherry. So uh, yes, congrats on that. If you do beef and Barnsley, I'm sorry. Hey, they're just not as fun <laughs> as we are. I mean, no offense to them, but uh, I'm oh, just Jesus kidding. Christ, I love beef and Barnsley. Just... Come on, I'm just busting their balls. But now we. We know you love beef and Popeyes. I know that. That's Popeyes. Me too. Love me some Popeyes. See? See? Come on. So. Popeyes is my spirit animal. But no. <laughs> I'm not against it. We wish you nothing but the best, brother. Uh, more continued success. We're all going to be watching you. We're all going to be pulling for you. And thank, thank you. you again from the bottom of all of our hearts. Thanks for coming on tonight, brother. So you, you know what, you guys? Thank you. It was an honor. And uh, let's, uh, let's, let's do it again sometime, okay? We will. That's all right. right. We'll next title. All right. I'll, yep. I'll talk to you guys soon. All right. Yeah. So, very soon then. I like that. You're damn right. Okay. Okay. Very soon. Right, man. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. Well, good, buddy. I'm telling you, man. Man. Like, I tell you, it's and he's 100 exactly like that all the time. Yeah. He's, Just seems like every time the guest signs up, awesome. we're always like, man, that was awesome. Like we're, every time we we're blown away. Every by show, the we're like, man, on you know. Yeah, like, no, we literally, awesome. like we always say, we learn something. We learn something new every time. Every single time somebody comes on, when True. he sat there and he was saying he's on his first ever PBA show, leading a major nonetheless, and he figures out a way to go find the television set rather than watching the show live. Yeah, what is he? Is he eating popcorn with his feet kicked up, like pretending Dude, he's on the think, couch? Like, think, think about, about how that. genius, how how simple that is, but how genius that is. I know. I, 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 know I sat here on this couch and watched a live show and said, "God, uh, if I were out there right I now, I would have done it." Or so, Nate Stubler, I probably would kick my feet a couple boards further right, or I would try and get it out to the rail a little bit quicker. You don't think that way if you're sitting there on the live set. You're sitting there on the live set, and you're saying, I would assume, oh, my God, 25 minutes until I'm Coming on. up soon. The timer's going. Yeah, I better get loose. I hope I, hope I got the right you're, ball. You're not hearing the commentary that's going on. You're, it's a totally different world just yeah. sitting in a different spot. It's when Now, said now that, is everyone going to do it? That's just it. Made my everybody brain who sees this is like, did we to just me, out of that? <laughs> To me, it just takes the nerves out of it. Like, like you're just watching bowling on TV, like you do every Saturday morning, or like as a kid, or whatever. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's yeah. fuck. You're right. It's next level, bro. It's that it's, was wild. It's brilliant. And if everybody else that comes on TV after him sees this and does that, I'm just saying. I'm you, honestly you, curious. Do people has? has I, I that's what I wasn't even joking. I was like, I, I wonder if people have done that and no one's ever said it. You're the first to say it, so we're, he gets the credit for it. So. I mean, he was real with everything. That's wild. Being concerned about what he was going to wear on TV because his oversized shirt from 15 years ago. Because his price is right. Like it's, 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 it's real. It wasn't the fact that he won the car and the $40,000 gimmick. Like He just said, he's like, man, that shirt sucked. <laughs> That's awesome. It's awesome. It's so good. It's so uh, good. JP, uh, Skyers wants to know if you're going to Clearwater. Jeff, I was approved uh, for some PTO. And I will be in Clearwater this year. So let's definitely hook up and uh, let's go over some particulars about my trip down there. But yeah, I would like, uh, I don't know how many more bowling tournaments my dad's going to compete in. Uh, I know that he's going to bowl Clearwater this year and he's definitely going to bowl Bill Moore's tournament because it's his closest friend. Uh, but uh, yeah, I have to at least make it down there and, and be, be, not to mention, I just I miss that bowling center. I miss the people down there, but uh, I am. I so I'll be down there. I believe it's May seventeenth through the twenty third are the dates that I selected to come. Yes, and uh, I will be bringing my golf clubs and not my bowling balls. Nico wants to know: Do we have time for the imbecile of the week? We absolutely do, Nico. That's where we're going to wrap it up here. Let me hit the. This right is actually here. more uh, Rob's imbecile. Oh, I'm going to light this fucking. But we up. we support Rob because Rob's awesome. I love you. It's time for everybody's favorite segment. If you guys don't know how to use a seatbelt, just ring your call button and Tommy will come back there and hit you on the head with a tack hammer. You know, Lloyd, just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber. Here's the imbecile of the week. Some people are really stupid. Hold on. Before we get into the imbecile of the week, PD's in the house. Patrick, dude. We got to have you on the show one of these days, too. Uh, hell of a run during the Masters last week. Uh, we're sorry you didn't get your first title, but, uh, dude, class act. I enjoyed watching you on Bold TV all week. 
And uh, I really hope you have uh, a continued great season because you uh, you really bowled your ass off. Patrick, uh, I, I second that, dude. We we had mentioned your name earlier uh, earlier in the show and gave you your kudos on an absolutely epic weekend. You are definitely the player, man, that is always there in the big ones, especially. I mean, Parma, Ohio, Parma, Ohio is uh, lucky to have you. <laughs> so uh, we're looking forward to seeing you get your first win very, very soon followed up by your presence here on our show. So. Ocho and his biceps approve of all this message. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. So moving on to business, if you will, uh, I had posted on Monday in various Facebook groups, D-Ron's uh, appearance on this show that was upcoming. And one of the groups, uh, not only because some of the groups uh, need admins or administrators to approve the post, uh, just in case it's controversial or, you know, it's a, it's a bot or, or whatever, which is fine. Uh, so <laughs> I tried posting in the USBC bowlers discussion forum, which they have 34,000 members. I'm thinking, great. What a cool platform to be able to get people to watch our show with the, with the masters champion. Well, not only did they not put up my post, which is all they really had to do. The one admin that's left, and shout out to Jerry Kessler, who started the group, who messaged me and said that it wasn't him. Uh, and there is only one admin left, and that admin could have just denied my post and moved on. He suspended me. He put me in a fucking corner in timeout uh, for like four days uh, just because I posted, uh, you know, we're welcoming the 2024 USBC Masters Champion on our show. That person, I found out, thanks to Riggles and, and several other members, is Tim Buck. Tim Buck, you dumb son of a bitch. Uh, you know, thanks for being a douchebag, because there was other people in the running for this week. <laughs> lots, lots of people in the running for Imbecile of the Week. Uh, but you are far ahead of the rest of them. You were the absolute front runner for the Imbecile of the Week. I wish I had a, uh, I wish we could just change the subject, the, the, the name of the segment. Call the Buck of the Week. The fuck stick of the week, because that's exactly what you are. And, you know, God, I'm, I'm trying not to cuss anymore. I got a six-year-old. She's probably going to listen to this or watch this one day. And it's not the legacy I want to leave behind, but. Buck, buck, bo, buck, banana, fana, fo. <laughs> Go on, Robert. Fuck Tim Buck and the fucking horse he rode in on. He rides horses? He might. I don't know. He, I mean, if he's. Never mind. I'm not going to go there, um, dude. You could you could have just denied my post, but in, instead you want to be an asshole and you s suspend me and put me in timeout like I'm a fucking toddler because I, I want to promote toddler. my show in this with the fucking are. recent champion though, just on TV in a sport that you're supposed to fucking love, you dickwad. No, you we don't want forty four thousand members of the USBC Bowlers Discussion Forum. Maybe You'd like, like to hear from the champ. Seventeen thousand of them would like to hear from the USBC Masters Champion. <laughs> Good job, Tim Buck. You're right up there with Joe Buck. <laughs> I don't know. What you're we don't like Joe Buck. I apparently I don't mind him, but a lot of people hate him. Oh, so I was just feeding on on the Buck. All right, right on. No, I, I I'm I'm out of the loop, man. As Chuck Doc says, "Fuck him and Doc Sullivan." Yeah, that's right. I mean, don't Doc. You're not getting off the list either, brother. Like, just and probably the the same Bucko will probably come back and say, "It's in you know our bylaws that say you're not allowed to promote any." Thing, uh, that uh, it's like, and dude, I'm sure it is, but promoting the USBC champion, yeah, you and it, it, EN doubles eagle winner at the USBC Open Championships last year. I'm not sitting here saying, guys, if you want free Popeyes, check out Manscaped Rob or visit our show, check out my Facebook page. Uh, no, yeah, no, so um, promoting the sport on the sport. sports discussion forum, fucking assholes. <sighs> it's called the USBC Masters. comment about Joe Buck since I brought up Joe Buck. Uh, read my. Oh, it was uh, shit. Uh, I thought Joe Buck was bad. Yeah. Uh, See, that's what I mean. Is a lot of people hate Joe Buck, so I was just adding Tim into into the Buck. Sure. Yeah. Should we call it the Buck of the Week from now on then? <laughs> <laughs> or like pass the Buck. Mm -hmm. Mm. Oh, I see what you did there. That's what you did. That's pretty smart. Marketing. It's all about marketing. John. Anyway, fucking stands here again. Stands trying to get out of shit. Oh, I'm on my friend and the entire sport in general. 
So go find yeah, yourself. good job. He yeah, sucked. Yeah. Unless he's one of the guys that wants to keep his footprint on it and say, like, well, maybe we'll just keep complaining why it doesn't grow because of fucking fat asses like me. Duh. Sorry. Not me. Um, him. Jay Blaze. No, we, we, or Ja Blaze. Sorry. Uh, you got a Pittsburgher in the house? We have not given the ball down to the glue. Uh, Johnny's working on that. Our, our contest is definitely over. We do have to pick a winner. We have nothing yet. We're sorry. We've been a little bit busy talking to U.S. Masters champions, but, uh, you know. I'm just fucking around. I'm not. I'm just being a dick. All right. Uh, and Aaron Cole, double we, yoy, yoy, and double yoy. Was that Rod Woodson who hit that ball like that? I don't know what that means. Anyway, That's Myron Cope. Everybody uh, in downtown will know who Myron Cope is. My beautiful friend Johnny. Anything else before we wrap up this amazing show? No, seriously. Uh, one more huge, huge thank you to uh, D. Ron Booker for taking time out of his busy schedule after all that flight and nonsense and finally getting to Detroit to go and try and win another title. But just uh, as everybody said in the chat uh, throughout the entire show, pure class, the PBA is lucky to have him. I'm proud to call the 2024 USBC Masters champion a friend. And uh, with somebody as even keeled as D-Ron already is, I can't wait to see the added confidence he has moving forward now. This knowing is it. That this not only can he it. lead, not only can he lead a major, but perform like a champion in his first. So now he's got the residue of just pure aw- awesomeness. He's, he's been there before forward. now. You know he there did, is no, been there, yeah. oh I missed that nine pin or there is no oh shit I big four because that's the stigma. The stigma was the 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 missed the, the fifty thousand or the missed nine pin to get out of the PTQ. Now it's like all right, motherfuckers, you know, but just, you woke uh, up the bear. Another uh, insightful evening with the uh, PBA's newest champion. So uh, couldn't be happier with the way uh, tonight went. And, uh, I'm looking forward to enjoying my Sunday night, cuddle up with uh, Evelyn and watching a new episode of Shogun. Well, Sunday, please. When? It's my Sunday tonight. Oh, oh nice. yeah, that's fucking, that's right. Goddamn night. Right. I got used to saying that it's my Sunday because everybody that, that lives in Vegas always tells you when their weekend is by the day, too. Today's my that's Friday. True. That's true. So, okay. right. that makes sense. Uh, me with my job, yes, this is still, um, this is this is my Sunday night. I look so. at the calendar. I'm like, did we change days? I don't even fucking know. But uh, this, this, so many invoices. I, I they don't like know. savings in the is. invoices. Frank Sundays. Well, a hey, thank you, Johnny, for making this happen uh, tonight. I just I just reached out, man. That's we have to just thank the Iran for that one. So, well, the Betragli name goes a long way. So, well, I'm glad that uh, it's just still, like me. I, I'm I'm glad that I've done some good for some people in this world. Because they keep coming to our show, man. So we must be doing something right. You would think. You would think. Uh, I look. I enjoy it. I, I'm just. Hey, dude. I'm here for the ride. However long this this thing lasts, uh, you know, it's it's cool to be doing this every week with you guys. So I appreciate even Ocho. I appreciate Ocho for his contributions. Totally. And the new mask is fire, dude. It's yeah, it good. sucks. It it sucks. Good guys Between wear the white mask and the white headphones. I mean, that's solid. You look yeah. good. Good the guys, guys wear white. You, you you almost look like the new Oregon Ducks helmet. <laughs> almost, almost. Well, he's got the O right. So, all yeah. right, guys. So thank you, everybody. We had 104 strong through the entire fucking show. I mean, that's just uh, the, the drawing that's power. That, that's Belmont numbers that we had. I mean, D runs a draw, dude. It's not us. It's it's our guests. Uh, but another banger of a show. We'll be back next week for episode 112 of Straight Up Five with Johnny Petraglia Jr. Good night, everybody, and. <laughs> Fuck you, Doc Sullivan. I'm sorry. We're and Tim Buck. And Tim Buck. Fuck. I'll see you. Good night, everybody. Uh, that's horrible.